Hey, welcome to Rapid 2X live workshop. We have people checking in. So while, while we let, we let uh, everybody check in here, uh, we have a huge turnout today. Thank you for joining us. If you could in the chat, click on chat and let, let us know where you're joining us from, uh, that would be great. And we'll just give it a couple of minutes for everybody to join and we'll get started. Hello, Kitos from California. David from Scottsdale, Arizona. Croatia is representing the De Denny Gel. Welcome. Hi, Jessica from Montreal. It's great steakhouses in Montreal, by the way. I'm, I'm from New York. I've been to Montreal for a lot of great steak there. Hi, Kristen from Texas. Love Austin and love Dallas. Vancouver, British Columbia, Alex. Germany, uh, Arthur. New Jersey. Well, we're next door neighbors, Steve. Let's keep going. If you're joining us, let us know where you're where you're joining uh, from. England is representing Mark. Hey, Mark. Orlando, Florida, beautiful place, Omar. Uh, Colorado, guest 175. Modesto, California, Ron. Welcome, welcome to the workshop. If you're joining us, let us know where, you, where you're joining from. Say hi in the chat. Click on chat and let us know where you're joining us from. In a couple of minutes, we will uh, get started. Uh, we have had uh, 3,000 of you registered for this live workshop. So I'm very excited to have uh, to be hosting you guys. Hey, Chris from South Florida. Uh, Washington, D.C., Bill. Bill from Washington, D.C., Dimitri from Florida. Welcome. Welcome to the live workshop. Let's give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get uh, started. This is going to be, we're going to all have a great time with this. Marianne joined us. Arun joined. Leanne joined. Say hi and tell us where you're from. Oh, Courtney, I grew up in Flushing, uh, New York. For 35 years, I just moved. Well, welcome, to, welcome to the workshop. Hey, Yusuf. Yep, Whitestone is a stone's throw from uh, Flushing, where we were neighbors for a while. So we have Marianne from Stamford, Connecticut. Zai, Zai joined us. Kansas City is representing, rep, you know, from Sean. Zai from uh, Connecticut. If you're joining us, uh, say hi in the chat and let us know where you're joining us from. Canton, Ohio. Mandy, welcome. Welcome to the live workshop. Emirani from Cancun, Mexico. Well, welcome. Welcome to live workshop, Rapid 2X. So, uh, as you're joining us and saying hi, also uh, let everybody know where you are in your e-commerce journey. Um, do you sell only on your D2C site like Shopify or are you an Amazon seller? Uh, let everybody know where, you, where you're from uh, and what where you are in your um, e-commerce journey. Lewis just joined. Hey, Alan. Hey, hey Lewis. Jimmy joined, Carrie joined, Grace joined, Ron joined, George. Hey, George. Hey, hi, Amy. Ahuna Saha joined. Let us know where, where you're joining us from and also uh, what where you are in your e-commerce journey. Kristen, big commerce, some Amazon retail location. Great. Uh, Kitos is selling directly from their website, subscription flow. We have Marianne who does Shopify and in person. Dimitri, Shopify with Facebook ads. Dimitri, you'll learn a lot about it. The game is not just Shopify with Facebook ads during our workshop today. Uh, looking at looking to start a B2C white private labeling business on Shopify. Okay, Mark, we will definitely uh, dive into that. 
Uh, Jessica is doing e-commerce through Shopify. The Corner Guard Store is 16 years old and have 140K customers on BigCommerce. Congratulations, David. Uh, Courtney is 16, brick and mortar and e-com website. We will definitely go through multi-channel. I've done, I'm one of the pioneers who, who did uh, omni-channel marketing uh, for multiple retailers and e-com. So we will definitely touch on several of those case studies. Uh, Jessica is also in retail. All right. So excellent. We, we have more people joining. We'll give it a couple more seconds and uh, strap in because this is going to be an exciting live workshop. We will cover a lot of things uh, and it will be a great. What I would uh, ask you to do, oh, uh, Matt is joining from Orlando, uh, does uh, B2C on BigCommerce, uh, you know, Facebook ads and exploring other channels. Perfect. Okay. And we will talk about a lot of interesting things related to other channels. Mandy has two websites, D2C and B2B, Animal Health Distributor on Kaleo, uh, e-commerce uh, platform, also have uh, five retail stores catalog and independent sales reps. Excellent, excellent. This, this is perfect. So the format is, I, I will be going through a presentation. Uh, what I would recommend is I'm going to go through the presentation and once the presentation uh, is has concluded, uh, we will ask for you to submit your questions, any questions that you have after we have completed the presentation uh, so that, uh, you know, anything that we can cover, we will definitely uh, cover them. Uh, we do have, um, as part of our community, uh, if you, when you registered for this webinar, you had, um, you were emailed a community link to join. Definitely go and join that because the first 100 uh, members will get in free and after that we will actually make it a paid community so i would highly recommend if you have uh, search for that email there's a link in there after your registration it's in your email you can find it if it's on gmail probably it's under updates or it may have gone some people were telling us that it had gone into spam so search for it and uh, definitely click that link and join the community it's free right now we are going to be uh, making it uh, a paid community uh, to limit access. So the first 100 members, uh, that's a, a thing we're doing right now. The first 100 members are going to get in free. And right after 100, we are going to put up the uh, the paywall there to, to limit access to it. And when you're part of the community, we are doing community uh, office hours. So we will be, um, uh, you know, we will be doing a lot of these uh, office hours so that you can come in and ask any questions. You could also talk to other people with, uh, with similar type of challenges that they're going through. And I'm also a very active in that community uh, by sharing and helping out uh, as part of that community. Uh, so it's qu quite a valuable community. At this time, the first 100 get in for free. Uh, and then right after that, we will put up, put up the paywall to uh, charge for that uh, access. And um, it will be free for the first 100 for a lifetime. And after 100, it will be charged. So definitely find it right now. Go and find that uh, email, click on that link, join the community uh, while you have this webinar running and, um, and do that as quickly as possible because we have had 3,000 registrants for this webinar. So as, as you guys are coming in, uh, just uh, Kitos, thank you for joining the community. Uh, you're going to have a great time there. So it's... Um, Definitely do it right now because there are 3,000 of you in here and the first 100 spots are going to be going for free. And after that, the paywall comes up. Hey, Habib. Habib just joined us. Carlos joined us. Uh, Dimitri joined us. Nancy joined. Wendy Chan, welcome. Arun, welcome. Patricia, welcome. Uh, uh, John Beer, welcome. So um, let us know where you're connecting from, where you are in your e-commerce journey, and we will get started in, in the next few seconds. Uh, one big announcement about the community. It was sent to you after you registered. Uh, it's in your email. So make sure you go and click the link and join the community. The first 100 get in for free. And after that, it, it, uh, it, the paywall goes up and we start charging on a monthly basis uh, in that. And the first 100 is free for lifetime uh, access to the community. Oh, there you go, Leanne. Uh, I have my superstar admins uh, working in the control room. If you're having, uh, definitely go in and join the community. And if it says pending, uh, they are uh, reviewing all of those uh, uh, memberships and they are, they are approving it. So 
definitely make sure that you apply. You apply to get in. All right, Leanne, I'll, I'll have control room. Look at your login and see what's going on with that. All right, welcome, Julie. Welcome uh, to um, live workshop, Rapid2x. We will get started uh, now. So uh, hold off to your questions. If you could write them down, uh, and once the presentation is over, well, we will be, uh, I, I will be taking questions and uh, answering them very specific to your situation. Uh, so we will take another half hour after the presentation to go through and take you through it. So strap in, uh, and this is going to be very exciting. Uh, please uh, jot down as many questions as you like uh, so that we can uh, answer them when we finish, the, when we conclude the presentation part of this uh, workshop. Well, uh, this is the Rapid 2X live workshop. Um, this, you know, we will be talking about the uh, 8D method. Uh, with that, uh, my, you know, the brands that work with me, my clients uh, have been going through it and uh, in under 90 days. And this is not one or two use cases. We will go through a lot of use cases that are current in 2024 right now. Uh, this is not a recorded, uh, this is not a pre-recorded uh, webinar. This is a live webinar. So any examples we use, we'll always use the latest and greatest because uh, economy changes. The world changes, the fa Facebook algorithm changes, Google changes. There are so many changes that go on in our field so often that we want to make sure that we are using the the latest and the greatest uh, information, um, and and we're not we're not uh, talking about things that are old and irrelevant. You know, so the 8D method has to do with eight dimensions of the business, and we will definitely go through this. So before that. My name is Sabir Summerkant. I'm the owner and founder of Growth by Sabir. I specialize in helping e-commerce brands optimize their businesses and 2x their revenue in 12 weeks. I have been doing this for 25 years, and more than 20 clients in the past uh, 18 months have at least 2x their business all the way up to 10x. Uh, and um, I've worked uh, with Gary V, if you know that name, Gary Vaynerchuk to start up and scale VaynerCommerce. So I'm a former co-founder of VaynerCommerce. Uh, I worked alongside Matt Higgins, uh, who has been a recurring shark on Shark Tank, and I've worked with other sharks on Shark Tank also. So to date, I've helped um, grow e-commerce businesses by $1 billion in, in incremental revenue. That's just the e-com side of the business, uh, using my 8D growth hacking methodology. So. Um, this is not for everybody. I want to be very clear. Um, if you are starting out and you're at zero, this is not for you, right? Because uh, the thing is, the program has to be right for where you are in your journey. That's why I asked everybody to share where they are in their journey. So you, if you own or manage an e-commerce brand that is already doing between 500K and $5 million per year in e-com sales, and you are looking to scale to eight figures at record speed while maintaining or maximizing profits. The game here is not about just taking a bunch of money and throwing it at Facebook or Google to double your business. That would be very lazy of me if that was the case. This is for you if you own, and, and here's the thing, uh, you have or want to build a brand that is recognized in your market as top quality and doesn't have to be the cheapest in the market to make sales. So. If you are doing pricing promotions and just giving stuff away and giving your store away to make revenue, that's not that's not the game here, right? You could be a commodity business, but at the same time, you could build an amazing brand, and people will flock to you and and give you uh, you know your sales and your ecom sales. If you're looking for an edge in a competitive market and you're willing to actually take action and implement what you learn, right? This is not, I'm not Netflix. You cannot Netflix and chill. You cannot just turn me on, on a, and put me on 2X and just watch and just let it go, right? Uh, these 12 weeks that we will talk about in the Rapid 2X program, this is a boot camp. This is, this is a serious boot camp for serious people who want to make a change and who want to double their business. And every single day of your life in those 12 weeks is a lot of work that needs to get done to any business. And we have had a lot of very successful clients do that. What you'll learn is 
the exact reasons why e-commerce brands are struggling to grow right now and how to fix them. Not in 2022, 2023. I'm talking about 2024, right now, right this moment. Because the world has changed. 2022 was a different world. We were just coming out of the pandemic. We're, you know, 2023, it's a different world. And, and we are go we have global events going on right now. And there are there are definitely uh, recession and inflation and all sorts of things going on today. So the things that worked five years ago or three years ago are irrelevant right now. So we want to talk about the things that are happening right now that we need to do to our business in order to uh, grow it. Why the way 95% of brands approach growth is wrong and how the top 5% of brands view it differently, right? Um, watching a bunch of YouTube videos that show you that, oh, you know what? Somebody said actually in chat that they're doing Shopify with Facebook ads, right? That's number one place to make huge, huge errors and very costly errors, meaning that you're, you're wasting a ton of money and you're not getting your return on your advertising spend. How the 8D method works and why it is the key to maximizing your profits and turning your brand into an eight-figure industry titan. How you can optimize each one of the eight dimensions. So 8D means eight dimensions of your business with real world examples and strategies. So stay tuned, we'll, we'll go through them. But first, let me show you some brands who I've implemented this system for. So this is our, our most recent client, Orem Brothers. It's a, um, it's a men's jewelry brand. You can think about how niche that is, right? It's not a women's jewelry brand. It's a men's jewelry brand specifically. Uh, they are, they're based in Netherlands. By the way, I do work with clients all over the world. So whether you're tuning in from Croatia, Netherlands, England, Dubai, Australia, New Zealand, I've worked across the world. I have taken businesses um, from outside of United States into United States market. I've taken uh, brands that were US focused and uh, brought them to Japan, China, um, you know, different parts of China because there are different markets there, uh, different parts of Asia, brands in Dubai and Kuwait and all over the world. I'm based in New York personally. So Orem Brothers is a Netherlands-based men's jewelry business. They market throughout the world. Um, they were stagnant for one, at $1.5 million brands. So uh, in the chat, if you could uh, you know, just uh, share with everybody if you are around this number in your, in your journey right now, around one to $1.5 million. They were stagnant brand at 1.5 million, meaning that they were constantly throwing money at the problem of growth right they wanted to grow they had the funds to grow but anything and everything they did was not producing it and by the way we will be sharing directly from the uh, co-founders of our brothers later in the webinar in their words how their journey has been we have managed they are halfway in their journey right now in the first six weeks we have managed to grow their business 112 percent using the 8d method so it's very exciting. We, we are very happy to have uh, Orem Brothers as our Rapid 2X client, and we are doing phenomenal things. And at the conclusion of 12 weeks, this company will be a very different brand uh, in 12 weeks from now. Magnolia Bakery, if you're from New York or if you're from California, you definitely know, or you have been to New York as a tourist, you know this brand. And Or if you are a fan of any of the TV shows, uh, whether it's Seinfeld or Sex in the City, they are they have been featured time and time again. They make delicious banana pudding. Well, the, these guys were hit with um, during the COVID in New, the, since they are primarily based in New York. They were hit uh, with the fact that New York shut down all businesses, basically a non-essential businesses. So literally, they had nowhere to go. Right. I luckily luckily I had um, the uh, the investors uh, knew me and they brought me in to rethink their entire business model. So I introduced a brand new channel. I worked with their team. And in record time, we introduced a new channel where regardless of where you were in the United States, we would deliver to you the same amazing, fluffy uh, banana pudding, delicious one if you've ever had them. They're amazing. Uh, so we we made uh, we created the e-commerce channel in re record time. We promoted it, and then we started selling nationwide. So 
mind you, Magnolia Bakery only had a few signature stores during during uh, uh, you know uh, nationwide in the United States. So they didn't really have the um, you know the footprint everywhere like McDonald's does or any of the other uh, fast food chains or anything like that or other bakeries. Magnolia Bakery was only in select markets. So now after implementing this, they are their e-commerce business was zero, non-existent to ten million dollars in twelve months. And everybody who wanted to celebrate any kind of a life event um, during the pandemic and, and following, and even now, uh, they were buying up all of the products from Magnolia Bakery, and we grew to $10 million in 12 months. And now the product is even further distributed in other chains and other types of things, and there are more channels that we are getting Magnolia Bakery into. And if you have not tried that, uh, Magnolia Bakery, definitely go to magnoliabakery.com. If you live in the United States, definitely place an order and see what you get delivered, you know, and you'll be surprised. Carol's daughter is a um, is a primarily focused on African American hair, right? So they their challenge was it was a is an it was a small nascent brand that not many people knew. Uh, so in within two years, using the 8D method, it went from $3 million to $10 million. And it was uh, acquired, the entire brand was acquired by L'Oreal uh, after that sort of a growth. Uh, Colaflex is a completely a new brand. Uh, this a brand was a figment of a colorectal surgeon's uh, imagination uh, where the uh, he had an idea of bringing better health of your digestive system and, and your colon and, and other things like that related to constipation, diarrhea, stuff like that. Uh, but it was something that he wanted to do a natural uh, solution that was um, less intrusive than what was available over the counter in the market. There are brands like their competitors now are Metamucil and ben Benafiber, but they wanted to do something that was much more natural. So I, you know, they partnered with uh, with us, and uh, from the Rapid 2X, we took this product was from a figment of imagination to number three spot with product completed uh selling number three spot in the in their category uh on amazon under 12 weeks and moreover the amazon ads is being well managed so now they're experiencing 10x roas so any agencies that you talk to and you work with typically uh you know they ask you to settle for anywhere from 2 to 2.5x ROAS on Amazon ads when you're selling on ad, Am, Amazon. And I can tell you that there is a lot of other elements they miss out on. And that's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, a, a something like this, when you see a 10X ROAS, it sounds ridiculous. And by the way, that's my favorite word, ridiculous, you know. So you see ridiculous uh, results when you do the right things by your business. And Coloflex has been built out from the ground up that way. So that it is a profitable business and it's it's a competitive brand now uh, in in a pretty big uh, category. Vitamin Shop is really near and dear to my heart. It's one of my first brands that I had turned around. Uh, Vitamin Shop was a bankrupt uh, dot com. Part of it was uh, bankrupt when I got involved. Uh, it took it from either bankruptcy or twelve million dollars in ecom sales to fifty two million dollars in four years. There were so many issues uh, with this brand that needed to be fixed. So all by concentrating on data and making the right decisions uh, based on actual uh, results and not based on some um, ancillary, um, you know, ego-based uh, strategies, like because I'm the CEO or the CMO, uh, my answer is the right answer, right? Uh, instead of that, we focused everything we did uh, for the dot com. We focused strictly on we tested, we learned, we optimized. We tested, we learned, we optimized. We tested, we learned, optimized. By continuously doing that that change, within four years, a twelve million dollar channel turned into fifty two million dollar channel, and it continues growing and and being successful. Uh, Love Your Teeth is another uh, story similar to Coloflex, where um, this was uh, uh, this is a brand that they came up with. It's uh, owned by a, uh, a very prominent infomercial company, but from an e-commerce perspective, this is something they needed to have the right chops to uh, to uh, launch something purely based on e-commerce strategies 
because the uh, strategies from infomercial industry were not really working in the e-commerce world. So this is a brand that uh, you know we we built out from the ground up, and it has become it's a teeth whitening kit. You can imagine how much competition we face from people from brands like uh, Colgate and gigantic gigantic brands, and we are a top selling teeth whitening kit in the U.S. Both on DTC as well as on Amazon. Ashley Stewart uh, is a fast fashion brand that uh, primarily uh, is focused on African American uh, community, plus size women in the United States. Um, they, this brand was another very similar to Vitamin Shop, a, 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 a brand that had the entire brand actually as a retailer, they had gone bankrupt. And um, Lucky for me, the CFO of um, Vitamin Shop, who had seen me in action and what I was able to do, invited me to come and see what I can do for Ashley Stewart because he became the CFO at Ashley Stewart. Uh, so uh, I got involved in this brand by focusing on the right things. And we, we would talk about all the eight dimensions. And this brand actually implemented all eight dimensions correctly. We went from, in two years, we 10x the business from $3 million to $30 million e-commerce channel. And not only that, $3 million at a gross margin of 30%, $30 million at 65 plus percent. So not only the top line improved, the profitability of this business improved. So the average brand that I've implemented the system, the AD system to date has more than doubled their daily sales in under 12 weeks. 12 weeks doesn't seem like a long period of time, but when you treat and respect every single day as a day that you need to improve your business, you can more than double your business. But the average brand that we have helped, you know, has more than doubled their daily sales. So what is the problem? So let's talk about the problem, right? So the market problems are, there are new competitors that are saturating the market. And what is the number? There are 3,500 Shopify stores being opened every single day. So if you think you don't have competition, you know, I, I come across so many brands and so many <laughs> entrepreneurs when I ask them, who's your competitor? They go like, no, 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 we make, we make something very different. We don't really have com competitors. No, your competition is the consumer's wallet. They have a limited amount of funds to spend on whatever they want to buy. And if, you, if you're not part of that consideration, that's your competition. That's it. So if you, and plus you're wrong, there are 3,500 com, competitors born every single day. So that's impossible. The ad costs, I don't have to tell anyone in uh, amongst you, the 3,000 of you right now on this webinar, right? I don't have to tell you this. The ad costs, you keep on spending money, whether it's Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Google ads, it doesn't matter, YouTube ads, if you are even doing mailings through old, old school traditional mailing mailers, the your your ad costs are rising. Uh, you know, even postage is increased, you know, versus uh, you know, every time you, you look around and you think you're profitable, and then the holidays hit, and then all the ad costs go go through the roof because competition increases. And then there are things like the platform has not caught up with changes like iOS update that Apple caused that that's now affecting Meta's uh, paid ads. And what, what, what do you do with that, right? Card abandonment rates are at all time high. Why? Because the consumers are intelligent. They add items to their cart and then they go and try to figure out, can I get this product somewhere else cheaper? Whatever cheaper means. It could be that I don't have to pay for shipping or I can find a coupon. Somebody else is selling it for 10% less, whatever. I can go on Amazon. I'll find it somewhere, even though they added the item to cart, they're researching and they go and and um, and they just purchase from anywhere else. And even email open rates. I mean, with the new DMARC changes that happened with Google and Yahoo and many other ISPs are following suit, are all at all time low, right? What do you do? You know, you know, you you would uh, send out emails that worked two three years ago. They don't work anymore because there are much more stricter guidelines on what kind of um, what kind of emails are let through into the inbox, and if they are not considered spam, they are considered updates by Google. And how do you get around that? You know, 
And Amazon is also tightening the belt, cutting into your margin even further. So if there are Amazon sellers on this webinar, and, and you know, like year over year, month over month that you have been doing this, FBA fees have gone up, storage fees have gone up, and every now and then you get, during the holidays, they ask you to either reduce your you know, uh, inventory, you try to increase it, then they hit you with, with higher costs because uh, everybody's trying to push more inventory into Amazon FBA and they don't have enough warehouses to uh, take all of this inventory in, right? So the, the ones that can pay, you can do that. But there are strategies that you can actually deploy more intelligently to manage and get better margins with Amazon. And this is one of my favorites. Since the birth of e-commerce, free shipping has become a currency and, and Amazon and uh, all the consumers expect you to do this, you know? there should be some sort of a free shipping offer and it's a currency. So if you don't do it, what happens, right? But how, how do you do it correctly is, is, the, is the name of the game. And return rates are rising year over year, right? People know that uh, shipping times are so much better now and, and retailers in order to make sales, they offer different types of uh, returns guarantee and consumers are trying to uh, you know, uh, take that up. And, and if they don't like something, they will return it so that they can get their refunds, right? And, and the return rates have been like rising top and up. I can write a whole book. The list keeps on going on and on. I work with so many clients that, you know, uh, we can keep on adding new and new things. You know, if I were to ask on this call right now, uh, list out the 20 things among the all of you that are on this webinar, everyone is going to have a different set of of uh, issues and problems that you are but these are pr pretty much the 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 primary ones that you are experiencing right now uh, but there are so many others so what are the common mistakes and the pitfalls when when you try to address these problems right so mistake number 1 you play the fb the facebook and the instagram slot machine Several of you on, on this, when you were introing yourselves, you said, oh, I, I'm doing Shopify with Facebook, right? So you're over-investing and over-relying on paid ads, right? And, and why, why are you doing that? Because either you took a course, somebody told you that that's what needs to be done. First, build your Shopify website, or you followed a YouTube, a YouTuber that told you to do that, right? And then after you build your YouTube, you go on Facebook, open up an ads account, and then go and set up your ad this way, to generate all this traffic, right? You became over-reliant on that. What you're doing is you're buying your transactions. That's what you're doing, right? You're not, you're not really building a business. You're buying your transactions at a certain cost, right? Uh, your average cart is $60. You're buying that order for $20 or $15. And, that's, and you're hoping for the best, right? That's if you're lucky. If not, you're, you're spending that you're getting a $60 order, but you're spending $80 to get it, right? That's not smart. You're going to be bankrupt very quickly, right? You're, you're not really looking at organic growth strategies. There are plenty, plenty, I can tell you, plenty of organic growth strategies that exist that I can tell you so many businesses neglected, right? To their detriment, to their detriment to the point is the over-reliance on paid ads. You're constantly looking for funding. And if you are starting out on your own, th that funding comes from your savings account. It comes from your, uh, from your bank loans, personal loans, mortgages, credit cards, so on and so forth. And there are some, some banks that give you a business loan to uh, give it to Facebook. And that's not the answer, right? Uh, you cannot have a sustainable business, profitable business by doing that. Eventually, something is going to give way. If there's any doubts, uh, if you look at the case study of Treasio that... Uh, acquired so many Amazon businesses, but they didn't have the right uh, operating system, it has filed for bankruptcy and they're selling off all their assets right now. And ignoring, and that's a very big example of, 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 of when disaster hits. And you're, you're ignoring customer segmentation. You're always looking at transactions that are just keep on coming in and that's what you're counting. And you're looking at, the game is keep on looking at the ROAS, keep on looking at the ROAS. That's not, that's not the right thing to do. You need to look at your customers and pay attention to your customers. 
not optimizing for customer lifetime value. In fact, a lot of businesses that fail, the, the problem with them is that they don't look at customers, they look at orders. To them, every transaction is an order. Every order is a package. They don't look at the person behind, the human being that bought it, right? If you look at it that way, you have a very different type of a business that's gonna thrive and be successful. And, and you're overlooking retargeting opportunities, right? It's, it's so much more, and you have heard this before. I'm sure that you have attended so many webinars that tell you that uh, acquiring a customer is more expensive, a lot, multiples expensive, than retargeting your existing customers. Yet, everybody goes and tries to acquire new customers, right? They, they don't look at their existing customers to see what they can do. Mistake number two, right? I love this kangaroo, right? Somebody from Australia also joined, so kangaroo, right? Tactic hopping. With a AD method, when we talk about it, we, we're not chasing any marketing trends. Uh, you know, like you find one of those TikTok or uh, YouTube reels that shows you, oh, here's a neat little trick you should be doing, right? Or you attended a conference and somebody got on there, go like, oh, you got to tweak it this way. It's going to work. Yeah, it's going to work. But that idea just was shared with a thousand people who are in attendance. And uh, those thousand people will share it with another 10,000 people. And that is no longer applicable anymore, right? And this is why when you apply a tactic that is supposed to be your savior, it just dies or after literally after a week or two and it stops working. And if you are at the tail end of it, now you're going to waste a ton of money for no reason, right? And and you you lack commitment to a single well-structured proven strategy, right? Instead of looking at tactics, if you look at the foundation and you focus on the strategy, you would be in a better shape than following all these tactics and hacks that go on on a daily basis. It's full YouTube and TikTok and uh, some even on LinkedIn. It, this is full of it. You know, ignore it. Uh, and what what else happens? You get you get too many things that need to do. One of two things happen: either you're spread too thin because you're doing all of it, right? And you don't have enough resources to do all of it, or you you are neglecting it and you're not doing any of it. So either you do all of it and you're too thin and and you're nothing gets done, I and you don't see any results, or you don't do it at all because it feels overwhelming, right? And e-commerce is all about data. Ignoring data is to your detriment. You you should be making data-driven decisions. And believe me. The data doesn't only come from Shopify analytics and Amazon analytics and Google analytics. It comes, there is also third party data. There is also publicly available data that tells you where you need to go. People are just not looking at the right places. And you are overlooking the power of consistency. For the consumer, if you deliver a consistent experience, then that, that consumer is married to you. If you do wishy-washy stuff all over the place because you flip-flop between different things and you keep on hopping, you're confusing the consumer too. You're, you're, you're not really talking to them. You're not consistent. Mistake number three, right? And, and this, is, this is every e-commerce company, right? Everything you do, what you think is marketing, all of it is price promotion. You're focused so much on 50% off, BOGO, Black Friday sale, coupon, 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 coupon. You never made an emotional connection with, with the consumer. You never made that attachment so that they love your brand so much. Instead, oh, when they give me a coupon, I'll come back. Whose fault is it? It's your fault. It's your fault. You're training the consumer to wait for your next coupon to come out or to be released somewhere so that they can come back and they can buy from you when you give them that coupon. Coupon has become e-commerce. And when when e-commerce, whenever somebody says e-commerce, they think it's, oh, it's just a coupon. Let's send them an email with a coupon. Let's post this coupon on our social. Let's run a Facebook ad with a coupon. They never thought of, and they completely neglected 
the nuances of customer journey. Where did they leave you? Why did they leave you? Is the coupon the answer? The answer is no. In most cases, it's no, right? You never did storytelling. You never tell them why they should buy from you, why they should care about you as a founder. You never told them that. Instead, it was 20% off, 30% off, buy one, get one free, you know? Uh, and, and you really never built that relationship. You made that relationship transactional. And, and there is no consistency in your brand, right? If I catch you on YouTube, you're, you're telling me one thing. If I see you on, on TikTok, TikTok, it's something else. If I see you on your Amazon store, it's something else. Your Shopify store does not even match your Instagram post that you're doing. Like there's no consistency in your brand at all, right? And again, coupon, 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 right? Um, we're not making sales. Let's coupon them to death. They'll come back and they'll buy from us. What happens? Your 50% margin, 60% margin goes to toilet, basically. It goes to 20%. That's your gross margin. Your net margin with operating costs goes to negative. And if you're swimming in the, in the red zone in your net profit, you're not going to sustain that business. And, and, and you're, you don't understand the long-term implications of that, those bad decisions. They come and haunt you to the point that you'll shut down the business. And, and you, you don't really give the due respect to your product by, and you're, you're not really saying what's great about your product, right? And every product is great unless you're selling, um, you know, you're reselling somebody else's product. Even there, you, your approach to that product is what makes it different, right? But you're ignoring it, all of it, because you think that, oh, just give them a coupon, they'll come and give us the transaction. And this is this is another favorite of mine. So the answer they think is, oh, you know what? Our competition has 50 products in their product catalog. We only have 20 products in our catalog. That's the problem. We don't have enough colors in our variations. We don't have enough taste of candies or whatever. Insert whatever variation of that statement you want to add to to that to say, hey, our problem is variations. We need to have more variety in our product line. But you're not doing research. Do, do your customers even care about those variations? How do you know the competition with the 50 products is not tanking and is going to go bankrupt? How do you know that? By looking at competition and not doing your homework properly, you might be going, leading down a path that your competition sucks already. They're, they're, they're losing money. And you think that they are right and you should follow in their footsteps. You need to do your own homework to actually see, does it make sense for me to increase my inventory, right? Uh, you know, there's always an argument like, should I sell? Uh, should I get more inventory? I could have sold more. You know what? That would be a happy day. But you're not even thinking properly and forecasting properly. So you're overbuying. And, and then since you have so much inventory, let's go back to the couponing to debt. You're couponing them in order to, in order to sell through that, and now you're not making your margin, and now you own too much inventory, and you're eroding your margins at the same time, and and you're damaging the company. So what's the alternative? So the 8D method. This is something that I, I, I worked on, over the past 25 years, and kept on perfecting it. Right. What I noticed is. When when businesses work on, well, you know, when they work on their business to see what they need to do to improve their business, they typically focus on one thing, right? And that one thing, based on popularity, there are many things, by the way, right? Um, I, actually, let me ask you before before I jump into that. In the chat, could you share, like, what are the three things? that you would focus on in order to grow your business that you think is the right thing to do? Let's share it quickly, please. Thank you, Kristen. Compelling video marketing. Okay, products that consumers actually want. Okay, uh, customer loyalty program. Okay, product page improvements, SEO, right? Let's keep going. By the way, the list is over a thousand, so let's keep going, right? Free shipping over a certain amount, okay? That's very old school, yes. 
storytelling, more research, more in-person selling, okay? Improved user experience, better tutorials, uh, videos, community. Okay, so here's the thing. The, the challenge is that each and every one of you know what, what exactly you want to do, right? You, you know what needs to get done, right? And I asked for three. I'm sure that if I give you more time, you can come up with 20. Each person's 20 is going to be some, there might be some overlaps, but you'll come up with 20. You could, some of you could come up with over 100, right? But the challenge with it is where do you concentrate, right? And how do you do it? And in most cases, after you write this down, the reality of you actually implementing any of it is highly unlikely. And there are two reasons behind it, two very specific reasons. Reason number one is that you don't know how it needs to be implemented. You know it needs to get done 100%. It's bothering you. It's nagging at your feet, right? You know that it needs to get done and you know what it is, but you don't know how to do it, right? And if you even, then, then you go down that rabbit hole and you decide to, okay, I'm going to do it, but you don't know where you need to strike in order to get the results you look for, right? And then there are things like, oh, you know what? Let me go on Fiverr. Let me go on LinkedIn. And I'm sure that you got swamped with so many email newsletters and promotional things. YouTube is hitting you, telling you how to do it, right? And everybody's telling you a different story, right? And then you try one or two of them, maybe. But what I see in most cases, because you don't know what, what needs to be done, you are paralyzed with decision making. Because you don't know, you know it's bothering you and you need to do this for your business. These things need to be done for your business, but you're paralyzed with indecision. You, what ends up happening, you don't do it. And then you go back to all the mistakes that I just mentioned. And you keep on repeating them, hoping that it's gonna be different this year. And it's not going to be, because you're repeating the same thing and expecting different results. In fact, it's going to be even worse this year because especially the economics has changed this year, you know? So this is why when, when I looked at eight dimensions of the business and come up with the right things, knowing exactly where to hit, it is critical. I'll give you an example. This happened very recently with one of my recent clients, right? I asked them to do a specific promotion and uh, it, it, it was for a big event that was coming up. They they did it. Uh, they pushed it out. I, I didn't review it with them. They decided to just push it out. Uh, and then they came back to me and said, "Hey, could you hop on on a call with me? Let's take a look at this because, uh, you know, th there is a um, you know we're not getting the return. You know, we're not seeing the conversions that we know it should work, but it's not working, right?" I hopped on when they were reviewing it with me. Within five seconds, I realized what the issue was. And this is where, this is where knowing, and because I have that critical eye, I've been doing this for so many years, knowing exactly what's wrong. It's like Gordon Ramsay looking at a dish and knowing exactly if it's overcooked, undercooked, or, or if it's raw or too much salt or whatever. I'm not Gordon Ramsay. I don't cook much. I do cook, but not that much and not as, as well as he does. But I know how to grow these businesses in e-com. Looking at it, and this is what you're going to have a, 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 a reaction on your face, just so check yourself. When I looked at it, I said, you're missing a border around the pop-up. That's it? Yeah, that's it. You need to put a white border around this pop-up, and you should be fine. They implemented it within the next day when they, when they hopped on, and we reviewed, and the conversion rate was through the roof. You go like, how do you know it's just a border? I said, you missed out on customer experience. And we will talk about that dimension during this during the uh, 8D method, as I, as I explained to you, right? The thing is, out of the 100 things I'm going to do over the, over the next uh, 12 weeks with your business, right? It's going to be, it's going to be, I would say 60% of it, you'll say, that's obvious. Why didn't I do that? The thing is, you didn't know if you needed to do that. That's the difference. 
And in most cases, 60%, 40%, 50% of those things I'll say would sound very obvious to you, but you never did that. And when you implement it, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And imagine those 100 things we do over the next 12 weeks. If you improve the business for each one of those recommendations that you implement, you improve your business by one, their conversion rate by 1%. In 12 weeks, we have doubled your business. That is that simple, right? Focusing on what needs to get done and knowing exactly where to strike is what you need to do with your business. Not knowing there are a thousand things that could be done. One of the things that I say is I've never seen librarians driving Lamborghinis. Let me explain what that means. Librarians have access to a wealth of information in libraries. But if you don't know, if you're not even picking up a book and reading through it and reading all of the books, not knowing exactly how to benefit from it, you're not driving any Lamborghinis, right? But knowing exactly what you need to do, it's not about doing 10,000 different things. It's doing the 100 very effective things and, and not time wasting. In fact, improving your results, that's what you need to focus on. And that brings me to uh, the 8D method. So why is this better, right? Number one, it's not a siloed approach. It's not a program that focuses on, oh, let, let me improve your Facebook ads, right? Or your affiliate program or this hack or that hack or whatever. It's a holistic approach to your entire business. Your business is sick. You need to figure out exactly what needs to be done holistically in order to grow your entire business, not look at just one aspect of it and thinking that more money solves more problem, you know, my problems. It never does. All you do is you waste more money. That's all you do and waste your time. So you want a proven framework that's built in the trenches. So this model is not a theoretical model. This is built on actual experiences across multiple product categories. So Sabir, have you worked in fashion? Have you worked with vitamins and supplements? Have you worked in XYZ category? Over 25 years, I've worked in every B2C category. You know, so I, I have, uh, th there are nuances of uh, differences between each product category and knowing those nuances, you, you can benefit from those kind of things. And borrow, borrowing from one category to apply it to another category and, and how it has made successful things successful, like th taking a concept from the vitamin industry, applying it to Ashley Stewart, right? Nobody in, in the vertical of Ashley Stewart would have thought of implementing that because nobody does it that way. Because in fashion industry, we are looking this way, like, you know, it's very siloed, right? They don't look outside of the industry. So bringing those experiences from other categories into this category is innovative, right? But for me, it's proven experience. It's a proven uh, test that I have done. I know it works. So let's bring it and apply it to this other category. And lastly, it's built on solid business principles. So not hacks, no, no hacks, no tactics, you know, not trendy stuff because trends die, right? They don't, they last only so long. If, if a thousand people know that trend, it's already done with. If, if 10,000 people apply the tactic and, uh, and Amazon finds out about it, they peg that hole and you cannot do it anymore. It's irrelevant or is considered against the terms of service. Or you think that this hack works on Facebook ads or Google or whatever, uh, and it no longer works because everybody else is doing it and it's no longer. So if you're, if you're basing your business on trendy tactics and stuff like that, it's not gonna work. You, you have to think about the strategy and build the right foundation in your business in order to be successful. So let's let's jump into these dimensions. So dimension number one, uh, I, I have placed marketing as the first thing. And, and this is why there, there's a reason behind it because marketing is misunderstood as sales slash promotion coupon cl clippers, right? So it's not that. So we utilize uh, storytelling, right? In, especially in the United States for the US market, and every market is different, but primarily, um, you know, if, if you're marketing in the, in the United States, and there are other markets also that are very similar to US market too in storytelling. And what is storytelling? 
storytelling is about if you are the founder of the company, why did you create this company, right? So many entrepreneurs don't tell their story. Like what was their inspiration? Did this happen to your kid? Did it happen to you? You were trying to find a, a thing for your grandma's walker because her walker was not uh, thought about in a certain way, right? Or whatever it is, it's your story, your personal human story. They miss completely, they miss that out, right? Or it could be technical. But tell the story of who you are as a founder, right? And when you do that, that's your social media content, not that you're running a Black Friday sale all the time, right? Not just during the holiday period. And, and when it comes to uh, influencers, what do you do? You shove that same discounting promotion and sales salesy stuff into the, the influencers and say, you go and make me more sales. How about using them as a platform to tell your story even more? Every product has a story. Every founder has a story. Every company as a brand has a story. Every brand has a story. What is your story? Tell your story and make sure that that story is consistently told through your influencers, through your collaborators, through your partners. Everybody needs to tell that story. And that, that's how you create viral content. Viral content is not just TikTok dances that people are doing. There are, if there are inspirational, empathetic, there are moving stories that, that why people care about you. And your customers might be telling a lot, of, a lot of moving stories in those reviews. You're just looking at the numbers related to the reviews. You're not paying attention to the content of those reviews to say, oh, there's a story here. Let me reach out to this customer and see if they would be willing to do video. Somebody said video marketing, but how do you do video marketing correctly, right? And, and it's building that. When, when it comes to omni-channel presence, right? Is your story being told across the board, everywhere you sell, whether it's Amazon, Facebook, because all these platforms now allow you to sell, right? TikTok, Pinterest, uh, Walmart, Target, Etsy, Shopify, WooCommerce, whatever, uh, you know, anywhere, even internationally. Are you telling the same story effectively across all of your omnipresence, right? Some folks said when they were introing themselves, they said they're, they are in retail. Do you take that social media digital content? Are you showing it in your retail stores? Are you telling that story even in your retail stores? Are you training your store associates to tell that story, right? That's why marketing needs to be reset in e-commerce to be a storytelling platform. And thanks to all of these social media platforms, it allows you to do just that, right? There are platforms that you have full control over. There are platforms that give you access to audiences. In either case, you can say that, oh, some platforms don't give me organic reach because Gary Vaynerchuk said the organic, you know, organic reach is 1%. Okay. What are you doing with that 1%? You're not even doing anything with that 1%, let alone. He's right. He's absolutely 100% unequivocally exactly right. He's absolutely right about that. But what are you doing about your brand and your storytelling to even reach that 1%? You could still take that 1% and you can take that content and uh, you know put some paid behind it to make sure that your story is told to all of your followers and to other people too. What are you doing with that? You're not really doing anything. You're just standing there yelling and complaining and, and saying that, oh, you know what? Just because Gary Vee said 1%, that's the answer. The answer is he's right. But what are you doing to storytell your brand? You're not doing anything. You're like frozen and in place and you're not really doing anything. So you just keep on posting. You keep on posting these discounts. And when it comes to uh, campaigns, right? Are you really you know, using these... Uh, human stories? Are you using the stories about your product? Are you showing them behind the scenes? Are you really doing things to actually bring that consumer close to you so that they move away from the transaction? In fact, they move away. I'm an e-commerce person that's telling you, move them away from the transaction. Let them build a relationship with you, right? So there's something that I also call one hit wonder. I have done a speech on this one hit wonders are customers that show up for that one transaction and you never see them again. And then you worry like, how come my email is not per performing well? How come my lookalike audience is on Facebook? I loaded up my CRM into Facebook 
my lookalike audiences or my retargeting is not working. It's like you you generated a bunch of transactions from one one hit wonders. They placed one order with you. That's it. They're not coming back. So are you doing things with these campaigns that are data driven so that when when those people come in, they're actually buying from you on ongoing because you built an emotional uh, relationship with them, not this one transactional thing that is like just they rang your cash register once and then you keep on going and running ads to try to get more transactions. More transactions is not the answer uh, to marketing. You need to actually invest in marketing properly and, and uh, really engaging community interactions, right? What, what, within your reviews, you have control over responding as a brand. I can tell you there are so many brands, even on Amazon as a platform, consumers are posting their reviews and complaining about or telling great things about your product. The brand is not present. They're not responding. They're not saying anything, not even a thank you, right? Thank you for giving us that recommendation. We'll look, we have passed it along to our product development people to make things better, right? Or thank you for, that's a really nice testimonial. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much, right? Anything, there is no interaction. That's in the reviews. Because community interaction for most people, they think that they need to engage with their uh, Facebook posts or Instagram or TikTok. And how many likes they got or how many comments they got. Not what about the brand's responsibility to, to return the favor you know, to, the, to that uh, community. So let's talk about storytelling with, with a case study I, I shared with you, right? That's a $10 million growth in 12 months, right? So e-commerce, you know, by integrating storytelling about we're not selling as Magnolia Bakery, we're not selling banana puddings, we're, we're selling events, life events, we're celebrating life events. As you can see, it has nothing to do with what's in that banana pudding. It's everything about the feeling you get when you're given that party or when you share, a, you know, you're sharing your, the, the delicious goodies that come from uh, Magnolia Bakery and how your event went, went for your daughter's birthday, for your graduation, for Mother's Day, for Father's Day, for the party that you threw in, the, in your backyard, right? It's the feeling, right? It's the storytelling of what happened. It just so happens that Magnolia Bakery was there when 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 that life event was happening, and that's what contributed to the success of that party. But and you were part of that story. And when people share, they go like the, the reviews don't say that. Oh, the um, the what happened was uh, you know we bought this banana pudding. It had 12 grams of sugar and this much bananas in it, and that's what made it successful. No one is saying that. With Magnolia Bakery, they say how great their mom felt when she was given this gift of, or these desserts that came, and she missed New York so much. It reminded her of the New York trip she took 20 years ago. It's the feeling, right? And that's, that's the power of storytelling that needs to be in your brand, right? That almost the product that you're selling has no meaning. It's the experience and the feeling that you gave them has a lot of meaning. And this is directly uh, from Matt Higgins, who was the investor actually in Magnolia Bakery that brought me in, uh, said that this strategic uh, shift now contributes $10 million annually to their revenue. And, and that was Matt Higgins from RSC Ventures. RSC Ventures owns on, uh, you know, Magnolia Bakery. Glossier does an amazing job, right? They're not my client I can share with you that they have done an amazing job of consistently telling the story of beauty products designed by real users, right? So this is not uh, a brand that, you know, that's manufactured in a factory. It's made by humans with their life experiences for practical reasons, right? That's their platform. What is your platform for your brand, right? These are, there are examples like that, that you can create a community, a de devoted community a hardcore community of people who will fight for you, literally fight for you. I, I can tell a story about uh, Ashley Stewart, for example, when we were not in the socials commenting because it was the weekend or something, our customers 
in, at Ashley Stewart were, were fighting for us, telling other, other people why the brand was so great. That's great. When you are not in the room and people are fighting for you, that's the power of your brand, right? That's the power of your brand. So number two, so we got our story right. Let's look at the dimension number two, performance optimization, right? Now, per performance optimization has to do with anything you do, you have to measure. Everything is measurable. Everything. Everything. If, if you want to put some things into the chat and tell me what's not measurable, I can tell you how to measure it, right? When you, when you have a digital platform like e-commerce, you can measure every single thing. Not only can you measure your thing, you can measure your competitors' things too, so that you can do better than what your comp competition is doing. It's just being smart about how to measure that performance and how to actually turn it into a weapon that you can optimize your business, right? Now, when we get to this uh, part of the optimization, what I do typically with with the with the um, uh, with my clients in the Rapid Two X is that we actually look at the the experience of your site, right? So can you can everyone quickly tell me what is the attention at span of a consumer in 2024? Attention span. Just give me your guesses. Go ahead. Three seconds, 10 seconds, three seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Wow. 10 seconds, two seconds. Okay. So two seconds, Carlos. Okay. Mandy says seven seconds. Okay. So some of you guys are way high. Uh, all of these numbers are high. The actual number from actual test and actual uh, study is 1.7 seconds. 1.7 seconds. If your web page, if your web page, any web page, not just home page, product page, collections page, category page, about us page, whatever, if it takes more than 1.7 seconds, you're losing, you're losing, you're losing 30% conversion rate from your conversion rate you're losing 30% every second that goes above 1.7 seconds. So just think about that. And Anders, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, uh, you said that it's a, a fish has a, a higher uh, attention span. You're absolutely right. You know, you gotta thank three people. Uh, so let's, let's thank them as a, as a collective. Uh, it's TikTok, Instagram Reels, and Amazon. These three platforms and apps have actually trained the consumer eye to be to have 1.7 second uh, attention span, because you uh, that's how long it takes for you to ignore things. 1.7 seconds. So if the if the page is not loading up on your mobile, and by the way, mobile commerce is more, uh, 60 to 70 percent of e-commerce sales. So if your site is not built for mobile commerce and it's not optimized for that experience, your your conversion rates are very low so if you compare device-based conversion rate right between mobile and and ecom and and your desktop and tablet you'll see that oh you know what i don't understand why my mobile is 50 percent conver converting compared to my desktop because your website designer has a very it has a beautiful mac on their desk and they're showing you how great the desktop looks but 30 percent of your revenue comes from desktop and you're ignoring 70 percent of your problem which is mobile you really need to focus on your mobile platform in order to make sure that your, your stores are optimized first for mobile and then desktop could be responsive or you could also optimize it for desktop. So if that web designer is showing you beautiful web pages on, on their desktop and it's heavy with graphics and all sorts of things like that, uh, you know your, your conversion rates are tanking, right? When, when we make this optimization, when we go through this, performance optimization of all the landing pages, right? And, and most of e-commerce is built on templates anyways, right? When you optimize those templates and you, you optimize it close to that 1.7 seconds as much as possible, there are so many things you could do to optimize that. Uh, you know, you, you would get uh, a sizable increase. So these are not 1% improvements. They're, these are 30 to 60 to 100% improvements in conversion rates. 
and by by focused on focusing on the right things with with the site optimization so so you you're looking at each one of these things one data point at a time right you're not you know one of the things i i do want to insert in here quickly is that get away from conversion rate right because you've heard e-commerce is all, all about conversion rate conversion rate doesn't really give you a metric that's that's actionable for you to do something about your business when you are uh, looking at conversion rates right even when you uh, hop into your um, uh, shopify analytics the second block shows you how you're converting it's a horrible metric instead replace it with session session value session value is how much revenue did you get divided by, by the number of sessions that you got that, that you received and whatever that number is let's say it's two dollar fifty cents right that number tells you more about your business and the traffic quality that you're bringing in and if you optimize it for that number then you can optimize all of your all of your kpis across the board for all of the platforms for example you can take any paid platform and turn it into cpc right even though they charge you by cpm or some other thing you can always at the end of the day they clicked on an ad that showed up to your site look at how many clicks you got and how much revenue you got from that and then if you see what that number is if it if the cost of that click was because you know how, what was your meta ad spend let's say it comes out to a dollar right and and your the revenue you collected was two dollar fifty you know, you, you made 2.5x, right? But on, on Google ads, if the cost per click was 50 cents and you generated $2.50 in revenue uh, on your session value, that means you got a 5x uh, return on that advertising spend. It's much more practical. This way it keeps you grounded on getting great returns consistently. When you look at conversion rate, it throws you off completely. It's, it has no value. I, in fact, I ignore it. As an e-commerce veteran, I'm telling you, I'm an OG. I ignore conversion rate completely because it's a meaningless KPI that has no meaning. Instead, replace it with session value, and you'll get a much more meaningful metric that really tells you uh, something that you can do for each channel optimization. When When you are looking at these performance tuning that you're doing for because everybody lands on your website right whether it's your images whether it's how many images what's your title well what are how you're highlighting things so that i can you can get my attention span in 1.7 seconds and tell me exactly what i'm looking at if you are meeting that uh, criteria you, you are converting you're you're getting people into that at the cart you're getting people from that at the cart to check out you're getting those people at a higher much higher rates uh, for Orem Brothers, you know that their, their checkout funnel has improved more than 100% at every level, because we have improved that that performance tuning at every level of that, because everything requires change in that aspect. So that the more we can pay attention to that 1.7 seconds and making sure that we we are moving them along, we we more than doubled uh, the more more people for the same traffic and less. Uh, meta ad spend, we we doubled our business. And and knowing about how to allocate your resources, right? You you have to think about how where do I put my money and time because both are resources, right? And and if you're not putting it in the right places and and you're not tuning it properly, you're just wasting money. And 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 it has to be. And it, this is a scalable model, right? The imp, the changes that you implement right now, it's not a tactic now it's going to keep on growing throughout the year because you're going to keep on improving it on, on an ongoing basis not by spending more by bringing in the right qualified traffic and you're being smart about how you spend your money and, and your marketing so this is a very popular brand right the uh mvmt right started as a crowdfunded venture mvmt streamlined this direct to consumer approach by optimizing ad spend right refining product design based on customer feedback listen listen to the customer and enhancing their website user experience right you 
the customers are telling you click by click they're telling you exactly what they like and what they don't like if you do if you pay attention to it you are rewarded handsomely if you don't pay attention to it then all you're doing is you're trying to move from agency to agency trying to find the next best facebook ads agency google ag agency or whatever to drive better results and and you're not really paying attention to the wealth of information that's being given to you and that's where you need to be very agile with your performance optimization, right? Pay attention. Chubby's from day one, Chubby's had been data driven. So this is a brand I, I really admire. They're focused on data analytics. They have been, you know, been able to pinpoint exactly their target demographic and make sure that if if they're if they have three different three different um, uh, demographics, they were talking to each one of them in in their own way. So when you speak to people from where they are in their life and who they are, then you're speaking with them. You're talk. You're talking with them. You're not not talking. You're not yelling at them. You know. And a lot of brands do a lot of yelling these days. Number three is product positioning and a, and building a brand. Right. When you're coming up with a product, what is the plan for the product? Why? Where should it be pre present in your portfolio? And where does it stand against the competition? And, and what does this mean to your brand, right? When, when you add this thing on, right? There are so many brands that wanna get into other categories, but the consumers don't know if they, are, they have the right to be in that category because they never built their brand to be in that category. They never had the permit, consumer's permission to be in that category. In, in one, one of our clients recent case, they were asking into getting into uh, another category. The answer was, well, build another brand because your consumers are so laser focused on you being this niche that you can get into this other brand if it makes sense. First of all, I'm not saying that it makes sense. If it makes sense, then we can get into that category, but you need to build another brand in order to promote and get into that product category. It can't be with this brand, otherwise you're gonna dilute your brand and you're gonna hurt your brand if you're not focused on the message and on this niche and be really good at positioning your brand and product in this specific way. When you build this uh, positioning, you build a cult, right? It's like a cult-like following. A, a gigantic example that I would hate to use but it's more relevant and everybody knows it, right? Why do you buy Apple products? Are there other better technical products out there from Samsung and Nokia and so many others? The answer is there's a cult behind it. Whatever whatever Apple makes, I'm going to buy it, right? That's, that's an everyday example I wanted to kind of use here. Do you have a product that has a cult-like following? Regardless of how expensive it is, people are willing to buy your product because your product it distinguishes itself from everything else and people are proud to wear it, to eat it, to consume it, to use it, to whatever. Are you actually creating that? And are you paying attention to, there are customers always in every database, there's always a customer that that is your evangelist, right? Are you paying attention to them or are you just ignoring them because you just want another transaction from them. So identifying and knowing your customer is very critical and knowing, is this a one-time buyer or a 20X buyer, right? The 20X buyer, you're doing something right by them. Did you even reach out to get to know them and see what can you improve and do or whatever to ask for their opinion, right? Most people ignore that. Most brands ignore it to their, you know, it's horrible. But if, if you do, a group of them, you're going to find a group of them. You can find 500 customers that buy from you 20X. D did you reach out and create a VIP group to not just give them loyalty points and give them promotions or whatever, to talk to them and say, hey, we're working on this thing. We want to just uh, get your opinion. And uh, we would like to uh, also give you first dibs on getting this thing before anybody else does. When you run Real Black Friday, did you give them uh, special access before anybody else buys anything? so that they have special access. This is building a cult. You're building a cult like following for your brand that they are emotionally connected to you, right? 
they they feel they're part of a community. There there's a sense of belonging. To them, uh, it's an you become an iconic brand, right? You're you're no longer just any brand that they could switch on Amazon tomorrow, right? And that's where if your brand suffers from that and you see that people are switching, it's because you're not doing something. It's not that, and some other brands are probably doing a better job of that, right? And and building those memorable brand experiences. Do you, do you create games? Do you gamify your brand so that people feel like they're part of this community and they're also it almost feels like a play, even though they're forking over you know money from their wallets, you know, buying that experience from you. And and when you see it, and how do you know? When you see those customer testimonials, they are very passionate, right? You see it, you know that these are really, really passionate uh, customers where it say, hey, you know, I, I bought this thing and my daughter, my wife, my grandmother, my dad, whatever, when I gave him that, that feeling that he got from getting this thing was amazing, right? And they're sharing this emotional stories with you and it's very deep, right? That's when you know that you have built a cult around your brand. So Ashley Stewart, like I said to you, I shared with you, right? Uh, kind of building that brand and building that cult that when you, you were not on Facebook over a weekend, your customers were on there defending you, telling other people uh, what kind of a brand you are and they're fighting for you, right? Even though you're not in the room for, for whatever reason you were not there, right? And, and also creating that sense of belonging that if, if Ashley Stewart's uh, competitors were selling them jeans and t-shirts and stuff like that, we wanted to dress her up to look amazing at, at every occasion possible so that she was the most best looking person in, in the room you know, at that event. Uh, so here's another example of Daniel Wellington took a commodity product that was available on AliExpress, built an entire brand around it and priced it at a ridiculous price. But that's the power of building a cult-like brand. So you should actually uh, go to their site and take a look at what they're building, DanielWellington.com. Right? Customer UX. Now we built our product. You know, we, uh, we have to build our customer user experience. And every customer has a different journey. Do you really know your demographic? Who is buying from you? Or are you optimizing just add to cart? At the cart optimization is not the answer. Optimizing it for the experience of where they are in their journey. And, and when I say that, I don't mean sales funnel. I mean, who are they really in real life? There are five different types of customers, three different types of customers. Who are they for your business? Are you really addressing them? Or because if you look at, for example, a jewelry business, right? Men's jewelry business that I'm going to be actually sharing more case study with you. A men's bracelet buyer is different than a men's ring buyer versus a men's necklace buyer. Very different customers. Are you giving them different experiences or are you giving them a generic experience of buying jewelry? So optimizing for that user experience gives you improved customer interaction because you're recognizing who they are, right? You're providing them that personalized touch point yeah, the loyalty point is not loyalty programs are not just based on points and earning points. You're giving them other things to engage them even more. That that that's meaningful for their journey, right? And and anything you're doing is feedback driven. Feedback doesn't mean you're just getting it from the customers that are telling you this. That's one point, but the data is telling you also what what they're doing, right? So are you collecting all this information and? and really making it an actionable thing so that people know, right? And are you giving them exclusive member benefits? That VIP group that you're creating, are you really giving them that sort of a experience that is VIP? Are you giving them, a because you're a fashion brand, are you giving them a private sale before anybody else has access to it, right? Or are you giving them uh, new arrivals come in and nobody else has access to it, only your VIPs do for uh, 24 hours? our advance notice that gives them exclusivity right that gives them this is one, one of the reasons the number one reason why prime amazon prime is such a winner right because it gives you that exclusivity that if i'm prime i have these expectations and amazon does a great job of meeting those expectations and by giving them amazing benefits so natural is a client of ours that 
came to us. Uh, now it's it's a number one brand in the uh, in the uh, African American curly hair uh, type of uh, uh, you know a brand that went. In their case, we actually looked at every single dimension. We completely rebranded the entire experience from the product design. It, you should definitely go to naturalclub.com. Uh, when when you look at their site, all the product packaging, all the iconography, the product descriptions, the community, all of these things were addressed uh, through every one of the eight dimensions. And and when we excelled at for putting the customer at the center of that universe, uh, we got rewarded uh, heavily. And this business is uh, has more than um, uh, in multiples has grown over time over the past two years. Uh, Warby Parker does an amazing job of customer experience by, you know, you could buy it from their site, they can go to their store and, and it, they give you this unified customer experience. They know if you're male or female, they know your age group and stuff like that and what your tastes are. They really, really optimize the experience to the customer. And if, even if you cannot make it into your store because you live in Kansas City and there is no store in Kansas City for Warby Parker, you can buy you can get the, the five frames without leaving home. So they offer that so that you don't have to do that. So that this is being uh, knowing your customer and being very intimate with them. So let's move on to the next dimension, pricing, right? As you can see, pricing was not at the beginning. Pricing is not dimension number five. After you do those other four dimensions, then you have built such a cult following that you don't have, you can dictate your price, right? Uh, let me give you an example. Well, you know, let's say you sell the same commodity product, same commodity product. You, you, uh, you know, somebody sells it at the lowest price, ten dollars a piece, and then that ten dollars a piece. But they say that they'll deliver it in fourteen days. Uh, it takes them six weeks to deliver. You, your price is fifteen dollars, so you can see it's five dollars more. It's a lot more for a ten dollar product, fifteen dollars, right? Your product costs more, but you have built and optimized all of those other experiences that your delivery and customer expectation is within two, three days, you're going to receive it. Who do you think the consumer will buy? They'll buy the $10 product because they'll get it in six weeks or they'll pay $15 and they'll get it in two and a half days because of all the other things you built, not just the shipping delivery time, because the trust that you have built with them, right? Uh, so there are things, this has to do with pricing, right? You have to think about how to optimize your pricing that you want the credit for all the great things you have done by the by the customer. You don't have to always discount because discounting is, is raised to the bottom line and it's a red sea down there, right? It's horrible. It's all blood, right? It's all red. So you have to build value beyond the tag, right? You know, if, if it's pricing, strictly on pricing, you're going to lose out. You have to build all of these other dimensions in order to build value behind your pricing so that when once in a while when you have to do be promotional for mother's day or black friday or something like that then you will get 10x growth on your over your uh, regular revenue day because they know that you never do that and because it's a special occasion you're doing it this one time the consumers will flock to you and and they'll reward you for it because uh, you know because it's a very special thing and and be very uh, dynamic, you know, be very transparent about, about your costs, right? Uh, so many e-commerce sites, they don't tell you their shipping costs. They don't tell you all these things. And then you are surprised at the checkout page. And this is why there's so much card abandonment and checkout abandonment. You have to be very transparent. So don't waste people's time. Let them know what it is. And, and you'll see that your conversion rates are going to go up. And, and you could do premium tiers also, and you can offer them more. That if they if they subscribe to uh, for better things, a be better bundle, be better packaging, more 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 involvement with your brand, meaning that they bought into five of your products, that's a different customer than a customer that bought only one product, right? How are you treating them differently from a pricing standpoint, right? When when you build that uh, uh, that value into that bundle, that value in that bundle could be content that you're combining with that bundle that tells a different story. So premium pricing for Coloflex, it's one of the most expensive, <laughs> you know, fiber supplement that we make, right? But 
consumers are willing to pay us and make us the number three selling product on, on Amazon and other marketplaces than to go and buy uh, a, a predominant uh, com competitors. Uh, Benafiber and Metamucil are gigantic uh, competitors of ours, right? But they are willing to pay for this product because the closeness and, and the story we have told, and it's a true story that we have told about how we built this product and how much care that went into every ingredient, every product that every ingredient that was put into this product and how we made the product. And and they are rewarding us for that. And 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 this is a testament to asking for a premium pricing and client, you know, and, and customers are willing to pay for it. And being transparent, right? Everlane does a great job of this to tell you, like with the breakdown, exactly uh, you know, why they charge the price they charge, right? And and where where there's a, a, a feeling of premiumness, you could combine pricing with also give back, meaning that your brand invests in some sort of a charitable giving or some other programs, education, you know, whatever it is. You are actually authentically, if you do that, then customers are actually willing to pay that. There are brands that they, they go as far as you know when they do their promotional, they do their promotional uh, offer. When they say buy one get one 50 percent off they're asking you to buy the second one at 50 percent off but they want to take the 50 per that second unit and donate it to a cause that they do where they're funding 50 percent and they're asking you to fund 50 percent so there are many ways of taking even pricing promotion and turn it into an amazing amazing event where cu customers are willing to engage in that so tech Tech, the wrong tech could be demise uh, in 2024. If your e-commerce features take you more than a couple of hours to implement, you need to reconsider your tech stack. If your tech stack is not like, there's no reason. I mean, I would say 90% of e-commerce sites can be on, on Shopify, right? Because Shopify gives you hosting, it gives you all the features, any apps that you need, there is an app marketplace and you can rent it and, and do, do, that, do that thing that you want to do on your, on your site. But if you're, there are some exceptions to that 10% that you need to customize or you need to over-personalize the experience, right? You may need to, you may, gigantic may, underlined several times, may need to write your own platform on Magento or Python or something like that. Other than that, for most businesses, 90% of them, they're fine. They're perfectly fine on a platform like Shopify. It doesn't have to be Shopify. Shopify is one of the most popular ones, but it could be BigCommerce. I saw several people say BigCommerce. So it could be WooCommerce. As long as it does it keep up with the changes that you want to do, the promotions you want to do, the, the customer experiences you want to deliver, it does it does the platform make your life easy to implement or not if the answer is oh i need to create a ticket to implement this and it's going to take our tech team six weeks to do it that's not the platform for you right you're not going to be competitive because in this day and age you have to be you should be able to turn things around and do things a lot quicker and if your platform is not doing that for you bite the bullet Replatform as quickly as possible because ongoing operating that bad platform is costing you business and it's costing you payroll and freelancers and independent whatever is costing you even more than biting the bullet and making that one time investment and going to the right tech platform. And there are so many amazing SaaS platforms that give you and answer your questions to solve different e commerce parts of the problem, right? that you're facing to be innovative and AI and all of those kinds of things, right? So do you deliver seamless user experience, right? Can you turn th those shoppers into buyers? Can you study the numbers very quickly and make a change very quickly? If the answer is no, it's gonna be six weeks before we can turn that thing around, you have the wrong platform because this is not 1995. If it was 1995, Sabir at that age was building e-commerce platforms, right? Then I would say yes, but it's not 1995. I cannot turn back time, right? Cindy Lauper, right? I can, but I can tell you in 2024, don't do that. You're wasting time, money, and resources, and 
you're overspending on your e-commerce platform, overspending, and you're losing opportunity and you're not competitive, right? So you, you need to rethink that. And, and especially in 2024, there are so many things that are, uh, you know, AI driven and personalization is at, at its top right now. There are hit or misses with some AI tools, but you can always test it and, and see which ones fit your model so that you could do a lot more things with that, you know, and, and we, we do utilize AI in the 8D method, uh, whether it's content or opt other types of optimizations and stuff like that, we, we, we will definitely go through that. And you have to be mobile first, not desktop. So if the, your desktop side looks great, good for you, but you know, it's a piece of art, that's all it is. You can stare at it. It's not generating revenue and it's not really helping you because most of your customers are on mobile iPhone is the uh, device and the second device. If you're outside of the United States, it's all Android devices. Most likely it's Samsung, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, Nokia. Those are the devices you need to optimize for. Desktop is a remote second, you know, or remote third. So you need to be mobile first design. And all of these things need to be integrated. So as soon as you take an order, is it does it flow very easily to your 3PL and they get the order out, you get the tracking information, you communicate it back through SMS, through email, through whatever, through their client customer portal so that they, they see where their order is and stuff like that. But do you offer that customer service uh, or self-service through that integrated system so they know exactly what's happening uh, with their order and stuff like that? So, and also does it give you real-time data analytics, right? Or is it gonna take you six months to implement a data analytics solution? Or is it, can you turn it on right now in the next hour? So these are real legitimate questions and there are platforms that allow you to do exactly that right now. So when, when it comes to a, a brand like Br Brooke Lennon, they've done a great job of personalization, integrating AI into offering and based on your behavior and, and what's happening, right? They, they actually uh, give, Based on analytics, they give you great personalization on the front end. That's what the customer sees. But on the back end of it, they use it to actually forecast demand so that they are getting smarter about inventory investment and, and forecasting and figuring out how to manage their inventory and tailor their marketing strategies so that, so that they're not over-investing or under-investing. They're spending at the right level that for, for their grow, growth. And especially when you're looking at a uh, home goods market is extremely crowded. This is how you stand out. Allbirds is an amazing, uh, does, does an amazing job of personalization, right? Through augmented reality and virtual try-on experiences. Really, really amazing brand. You should definitely go to these sites as I'm sharing these examples with you and see what they're doing right with their brands that you can learn from uh, in order to implement it. And we actually look at these experiences to do that. Logistics. If you have the wrong logistics, if your business grows because of the other five dimensions I just shared, but you're not, uh, you're, you're, you can, you cannot keep up with. When I say logistics, I don't mean just order fulfillment. I mean every aspect of logistics, supply chain, your ingredient supply, uh, supplier, your customer service, all of those things. Is it lock and step? Meaning that if you two x that business, you work with Severe, Rapid two x, you're, you're. You were doing a thousand orders per month. Now you're doing two thousand orders per month. Does your logistics keep up with, with, with that growth? Right. It's great that you're growing, but if you cannot get the orders out, then what do you have? Your customer service is gonna tank. Your 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 ratings are gonna tank. People have a bad taste in their mouth because of the bad experience they they had. All those other dimensions that you worked so hard on actually starts collapsing. Right. That's why you need to have you need to pay attention to your logistics to make sure that you have reliable deliveries. Uh, you're, you're using things like if you for your brand, if eco-friendly packaging is meaningful, you need to pay attention to that. You need to provide real-time tracking. This is table stakes, right? Uh, if I don't like the product, can I return it? What is your return policy look like? Be very transparent. If you if it's perishable and you don't take it back, let them know, right? But you cannot you cannot not say it and then when we reach out to you to return it then you say no we don't take returns because it's perishable it should be obvious to you no you didn't make it obvious to me as a consumer make it obvious right and and even if you grow uh globally and there are a lot of e-commerce sites that join today 
that actually have a global reach, but you should have a local feel, right? The, what does local feel mean, right? When, when I'm connecting with you from my country, do you accept my payment methods? Do you give me content that's relevant to me? Does it address my problems locally because your, pro, your product solves my problem in my local market, right? Are, are you giving me that sort of a local feel to it, right? That's from a content standpoint. Now, from a delivery standpoint, when I place my order, are you going to tell me that because I live in Dubai, now it's going to take me four weeks to get my package, right? The, the, the world is so small now in 2024. Why does it take four weeks for me to get my package, right? I, I just, you know, you're telling me that if I lived in New York, I'm going to get it in two days. But because I'm in Dubai or I'm in Netherlands or I'm in South Africa, it's going to take me four weeks. Like that doesn't feel local to me, right? It, I should not be any different. And there are many, many, by the way, many providers that uh, that actually offer you that local feel so that when, when you deliver, you're delivering at that speed. So Young Nails uh, the, does uh, an amazing job of, uh, they were my clients at one point uh, that I hurt, helped them in their journey, right? Uh, you know, I, I actually visited their tour. They had a specific problem that uh, they were growing, they, they had started focusing on e-commerce, but um, their logistics was off. So I physically went to their facility in California. I took a tour. It took me about three, I think it was about a three to four hour tour. And I wrote a hundred page uh, document on how they can improve their logistics. And and literally the Habib Salo is the is the co-founder uh, and the CEO of the company. He literally paint, uh, printed out those hundred pages, put it in a war room and started implementing every single page. And, and the, this brand has skyrocketed. They they uh, focus on professional nail salons and and optimizing the the logistics uh, experience and order delivery and how to handle growth. They were able to scale tremendously and not by over investing. And and when it comes to personal touch, uh, I don't know if you have pets. I have pets. I have a parrot and a and a cat, right? And there are a lot of people probably with dogs, you know. Uh, but if you have ever dealt with Chewy. It, they deliver an amazing, amazing personalized approach to to their logistics when they when they deliver that experience with handwritten notes and uh, different types of surprises in that box. When you achieve when you receive that box, my cat gets all sorts of surprise gifts all all the time in their order. And and this one is the is the final dimension. It has to do with your team. And when I say team, people cannot get turned off they don't understand like why team is one of the dimensions here and i'm not talking about hr here so i'm going to talk about what team means team is anyone that touches your business whether it's your mom help, helping you out on on the weekends or the freelancers you hired on fiverr upwork or linkedin or you you have uh full-time people that work for you 3pl partners that ship out your order the agency people that you hire to do work on X, Y, Z, and Z, all of those you need to, that's all part of your team. They're touching your brand, they're part of your team. And if you have the wrong team members, and if you, if you hired them when you were at zero and, and they did a great job of getting you to 500K, maybe they're not the right part team member at this moment now to take you to the 1 million mark or two and a half million or 5 million or 10 million. Maybe maybe you are completely out of, you're, you're out of that zone, right? So you need to uh, make sure that your team is always optimized for the right size of, of your business. Because uh, maybe their function was great, maybe they can play a different role, but it can't be, they cannot play a role anymore. You have to be uh, smart about it, right? And also there are people like, if you get on platforms like, there are hit or misses on, on Fiverr and Upwork. You have to figure out, like, test them out and find the right people. And you can find really great people on, on Fiverr, but not everybody is great on Fiverr. There are a lot of misses. I would say 95% of them would be misses. 5% after trial and error, you might find the right partners 
if you like using a platform like Fiverr or Upwork or any any of those kind of platforms. But any anyone that touches your business, you have to think about your team and and you have to like really make sure that they're aligned with your brand. They understand where you're going. You have to create cross-functional collaboration. What does that mean? Right? As you're growing, you're going to you, because you're the founder you're going to have you're going to have a lot of chiefs right you're going to have chief marketing officer chief this chief that chief operating officer financial officer just put a cxo whatever that x is right and each one of them typically what i find is they run their own kingdoms inside of and fiefdoms inside of their own departments and that lack of that communication causes a lot of the issues in all of the other dimensions i just mentioned to you right Marketing is not talking to logistics. Logistics is not talking to customer service. Customer service is not talking to merchandising. Uh, nobody told you know that your tech people that certain things needed to get done is just a mess, right? And in case of e-commerce, a lot of these things not only this is where things fall through the cracks, but in case of e-commerce, a lot of fraud also happens because of lack of communication, right? When when your when your customer service is not talking to marketing or any other groups, right, and and vice versa, then the people who cause fraud, credit card fraud, and stuff like that, that's a reality. And that's just one example. I can give you so many examples of when there's a communication breakdown between the, the, the groups, it causes a mess in, in in an organization. And because we are we, we are in an e-commerce world and a digital and social world. Things are changing all the time, right? AI is now changing every six weeks. Uh, search engines change almost on a monthly basis. Social media platforms change on every two, three weeks. The algorithms change. You know, you hear about algorithms all the time. You need to make sure that you're investing in the continuously investing in skill sets that are uh, that people are in the know. They understand what's going on. Not that they're implementing things that were true maybe three months ago or six months ago or whatever, and then you're wasting time and money with that, right? And anything you do, any decision making you do, it has to be centered towards your customer because if your customers don't exist, your company does not exist. You have to pay attention to your customers. You have to see, and every 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 department that you have, if you have departments or you have different roles that those people that play as those departments, they need to pay attention to the customer and the customer speaks loud, very loud, through data, through their actions, through what they're doing, they need to pay, you need to pay attention to them and that each team member needs to understand what's going on. And everybody needs to be talking to each other, right? And as the founder of the company, it's your responsibility to make sure that everybody is talking to each other. So when you optimize that, you can see that this was a 4.3x growth in, in a vitamin shop, 50, 12 million to 52 million, right? Zappos is well known. In fact, the late Tony Shea wrote the book, uh, uh, Delivering Happiness. If you have not read that book, definitely pick it up and read it, or you can listen to it on Audible. That's how I, I, I listen to it. Phenomenal, like obsessing about, uh, you know, building the right technology uh, and, and the team and, and the, all the team focused on the customer so that the customers are given an amazing experience, right? So uh, th that's a great example. There's a book about it, read it, uh, Delivering Happiness, available on Amazon. So let's recap. So to build an e uh, eight-figure e-commerce brand, you need a real brand, right? That has to tell uh, and resonate with a very specific subset, a niche of your market. You always be testing, A-B testing, everything, learn, test, learn, and optimize everything so that you can charge premium prices and get away from competing on price. Marketing that combines storytelling and user-generated content so that you can maximize your, your ROAS and maximize your selling and you can build a tribe of loyal followers. A fully performance optimized and A-B tested sales funnel, right? So that when you're taking the consumers through that journey that you have optimized every part of it. And as like I said, 1.7 seconds. If you can remember one thing from this from this uh, workshop, 1.7 seconds should be etched, and you should write it down on on, on a piece of paper. And you may want to damage your desk, <laughs> carve it in 1.7 seconds. 
so that no stone is left unturned when it comes to optimization. Your tech stack has to keep up with the ambitions you have and the, so that you, when you want to make changes, you should be able to make them rapidly, not six weeks, not four weeks, not three days, within a couple of hours, a couple of minutes, right? Uh, and, and when it comes to logistics, it needs to be lock and step with growth and make sure that that part of it is uh, growing so that because that's directly re related to negative reviews and negative ratings. You make sure that you're when you're building your team, it's the right people at the right stage of your growth, not that people that just because they're warm bodies and they can handle things. That's not the answer. It has to be the right people, even though they might be a little bit more expensive. They will save you a ton of time. Right. And create an amazing customer experience because it's all about the customer. It's not about you. It's all about the customer. Right. Build all the right things. Give them right tools because that's the customer expectation of today. Like, are you giving them that? Right. When each one of these eight dimensions are optimized, what do you have? You have happier customers, better, better staff, more growth, uh, better margins and bigger margins, you lower cost of acquisition and higher ROAS, right? Customers who begin who buy from you time and time again, and they love you so much that when you're not in the room, they fight for you and tell their friends that you need to be buying from this brand. And then if you have investors, uh, you know, you have happy investors because they bought an asset that's growing in, in size and volume and margin and profitability. They're happy. Or if you don't have investors, you can attract investors from that. You have less stress, by the way. Uh, even though the 12 weeks, the first, like you, if you talk to any of my clients, the first two, three weeks may have been stressful because they were, they were, they were training a muscle that they didn't have before. But once they get into it, they feel so well, good, you know. I asked one of my clients, I said, how you feel? Every meeting we start, I say, how you feel today? And she said, she says that, you know what? We're growing at, at a ridiculous rate, but I don't feel stressed. And, and that's amazing. That's amazing to hear, you know? Uh, a business that runs like a well-oiled machine, not that every time you're fighting for a transaction, right? So why don't most e-commerce businesses do this? Don't do this, you know? They don't have a proven game, game plan. They don't have a roadmap to help them execute the game plan. They don't have a mentor. And I have been a, a mentor to so many businesses that Sharks on Shark Tank, Gary V, um, other investors and venture capital firms, a lot of founders put a, uh, their trust in me uh, to grow their businesses. And they are not disappointed. They keep on getting amazing results and continue growing their business. And, and it's more, more on practical, uh, grounds than theoretical BS and tactics. But, and, and they don't have a network of other people like this group right here that's chatting in the chat group, right? Like you guys are six, six figure, seven figure, depending on your, where you are in your journey that you just shared, eight figure e-commerce. You, you need to hear from other people who are feeling your pain, right? In addition to me helping in the community, you have other people that are sharing in your pain and they can tell you, oh, I did that. This is how I solved it, right? Just having that community where you can feel that, that you, you can reach out to some people who have, who have experienced similar things, that's, that's an amazing feeling, right? Uh, having, being able to have access to that. But what if there was a solution you know, that solves all of these problems without breaking the bank, right? So one thing I did, uh, because I was working exclusively over the past several years, where I was ex working exclusively for very, um, you know, people that could afford me, right? And when I say that, I, I was charging for this 12-week program when I was working one-on-one one -on -one with these brands, I was charging $100,000 for the 12-week program. Plus, I was charging, um, you know, uh, my time was one-on-one -on -one with them, and I was charging for... Uh, you know, equity and rev share and other types of things with them. Then what, what started happening was I started getting DMs on, on uh, LinkedIn. Like, hey, you know, I heard about you. Can, can, I, I'm not able to afford 100K where I am in my journey. I need to, I could use your advice, but I cannot afford the 100K. So this is where we are introducing this Rapid 2X Mastermind where I take at, at a very reasonable price, it's not 100K, so hold on to your breaths, you know. It's not 100K, but I'm selecting, it is open. I mean, I, I can tell you that this webinar is full, more than more than 3,000 people uh, showed up. 
but I have only 15 spots that are available that I am I'm I have already have sold uh, 10 of them before even getting on on this thing so that as soon as we st started announcing it people went to the website do, they checked out who I am and what I've been able to do and the case studies and everything else so we already booked 10 people I can only take on 15 more people for the for this first mastermind that that I'm doing and um, so I wanted to make it affordable in a group setting where I can share with you this, these, uh, each one of these dimensions for those 12 weeks, we will work on one dimension at a time every week. And you will be told exactly what you need to do on a weekly basis. Let's say on every Monday, we will be meeting where you'll be given exactly what needs to get done, how it needs to get done. And then you go and do, you will start working on it on Thursdays and when, or Wednesdays, we have office hours where you can join in. I'm going to be there. You can ask specific questions re related to your, uh, you know, your specific case, and you could screen share and tell me exactly what, how did you do it, and if, I, if there are tweaks that need to be done, I'll be helping you through that screen share during those office hours on a weekly basis. Also, in addition to the Rapid 2x sessions that we will do on Mondays, so uh, I'm opening this program up, uh, this opportunity for people who are in that 500k to five million dollar range that 100K investment was a gigantic investment for the Hyper 10X program, which is meant to be for um, uh, you know, the different type si size businesses. This is where I'm opening it up to uh, 25 entrepreneurs to come in, 10 are already sold out. And, and given the numbers we have here, if you're interested, definitely book your uh, time and uh, you know for a discovery call. So you will get to work with me for those 12 weeks. Uh, you will network with a small group of like-minded e-commerce entrepreneurs. And, and we have the community there that, that I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. Uh, so the first hundred that got in, uh, you know, you got in for free. Um, and then we're going to put the paywall up so that it's going to be a paid, um, a paid community that uh, you, you have to pay to get in, in there so that you can get to uh, network with other seven, eight, and nine-figure e-commerce brands. And you stay on top of all these changes because uh, uh, the e-commerce landscape is ever-changing. Right, and you want to make sure that you're on top of your game, and and you understand how to actually leverage those uh, changes so that it it actually works for you, not against you. And you can you you get this opportunity through this Rapid 2x Mastermind in order to work with me uh, one on one, so that you can see the results that uh, my my clients have seen, uh, especially the the 20 clients I've had in the past 18 months. They have seen these scale of 2x to 10x. Uh, some you know like that they have seen regularly. So there's always a fork in the road, always a fork in the road, right? You can try and do this on yourself uh, and end up like this guy, right? Because you do it because you heard it and you you think that that's the right thing to do, and then you end up like banging your head and you're not going anywhere, right? So you can go it alone or Rapid 2x gives you takes out the guesswork and mistakes. You're wasted ad money, no more guesses. Yeah, any struggles you have with Amazon, that goes away. If you're selling on Amazon, we do cover that. Uh, you have uh, too many influencers, little return and uh, ignored emails and lost sales from ab abandoned carts and always playing catch up. So that's, if you go it alone, not much changes there. But when you work with uh, Rapid2x, you, you're working with insights from 100 plus e-commerce brands. Uh, you know, you get a mentor guidance from me. I'm personally involved. I don't have other mentors that I hire to do the program, I do it myself. So you get direct experience working with me. Of effective ad strategies that really work, laser targeted growth strategies that make sense. And we are going to be using AI so that you understand how to use AI properly uh, for your business. Uh, and you reduce lost sales and you stay ahead with, with planning. So keep in mind that uh, the average uh, brand I've implemented gets 2X in, in their daily sales in under 12 weeks by implementing these 8D method dimensions so you know i've 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 talked for this long uh let's hear from one of our most recent clients so this is max from orem brothers uh like i mentioned uh it was a his his business was uh, he co-founded this business with his brother uh was 1.5 million dollar brand stagnant for more than five years now uh and we be able to turn that around and make it a profitable and 112 percent increase in sales in six weeks, they're in the middle of the program right now. In 12 weeks, this is this this is going to be a very different company. So let's hear it.
Uh, can you guys hear 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 his testimonial? Okay, L let me let me try something. How, how about now? So uh, if you couldn't hear it, I just posted the the link to the case study so that if you can play it, uh, you can play it and you can hear it directly from. Um, uh, does the link work for you guys? If you could just give me a yes, thumbs up, uh, so that I know that you were able to access that link to the case study. All right, perfect. Okay, so please uh, do look through that so that. Uh, uh, you know, you can hear it directly from him and, and you can hear exactly what we were able to accomplish. And this is a halfway point right now. They're an active client right now. In six weeks, they gave, gave us this testimonial. And then in, in 12 weeks, we're going to do another testimonial. And this is going to be a very different uh, company. So, but before you schedule your a call, you need to know that I don't work with everybody. Because remember, I'm not an agency. I'm an advisor, right? I work with only a select group of people. And even in our Rapid 2X Mastermind, we have limited seats, very limited seats. So we're not able to pack in there. If you have seen some um, masterminds and other types of programs, they, they pack like a thousand people and you don't really get any opportunity to share or learn or anything like that. And then it just becomes a useless program. Uh, I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to, I don't want you to waste your fund or time by, uh, you know, by having so many people in there. So we are doing this mastermind with only highly qualified 25 people. 10 spots have already gone, right? I have only 15 spots available and I have a huge crowd right now at this webinar, uh, you know, who are, you know, but you have to go through a qualification process and let me share with you what that is, right? Please make sure, cause we don't, I have only limited the number of people in my sales team that actually go through the vetting process so if this is not you, please don't even bother booking the discovery call. Please don't do that because uh, you know if you're too small or too early in your e-commerce journey, the Rapid 2X Mastermind is an overkill for you at this moment. So if you're a business less than 500K, Rapid 2X Mastermind is not for you, right? So don't, don't bother. If you are at least 500K in e-com sales, so if you're a retailer that does less than that, uh, you know, maybe we can work with that, but it has to be that e-com sales is 500K minimum. You could combine your Amazon and, and Shopify sales together. Your DTC sales could be combined. Uh, as long as you're doing 500K, that's the that's the lowest barrier we have because we, we want to make sure that it's the right people and the right network of people in that group because you will be implementing a lot of things that will be told to you uh, well, in these dimensions. So 500K to $5 million. If you do more than $5 million, we have a different program for you. You could still book a discovery call, but explain that you are a $10 million brand or a $100 million brand. We do work with uh, select clients that are in that range, uh, but it's a different program than the Rapid 2X uh, Mastermind. So if you are in this range of 500K to $5 million per year in e-com sales, total e-com sales, uh, you qualify. If you're stocked up and able to handle some serious growth over the next 12 weeks, if if your best sellers are sold out and you don't have inventory and you're trying to figure out how to replace those best sellers, the, the, the problem is you have other types of issues, major issues with, the, with that business, right? You, you want to make sure that you have enough inventory so that if you were to double this business, you have inventory to support for it. Or if you have access to that inventory over the next 12 weeks, because some things, if you're ordering from China, it may take four months for it to get there. That means that it's not going to be here in 12 weeks when we are doing this, this growth. So make sure that you have a good handle over your inventory. You have or you want to build a prop, proper brand that is top quality. No fluff or pro, poor 
quality gimmicks, right? So you, you have to have a product that's meaningful that we can really get behind it and, and do something serious with it, right? And you want to be part of a community of winners and like-minded brand owners. So the, the 25 people plus the 100 that we are letting in uh, into our community, it, we, are, we are creating that like-minded group of people. And plus, if you're part of that Rapid 2X mastermind, you also have access to that exclusive office hours that the other people in the community won't have, right? Because community is separate from the mastermind office hours. So here's what you need to do next. So click the button uh, and, and go to and schedule your free 15 minute discovery session with my team. Uh, they're phenomenal. They're very friendly and uh, they'll really take care of you after you have gone through the webinar. You understand, truly understand what the 8D method is and what you would like to do. And if they if they feel like we are a good fit and they'll walk you through the offer and our pricing in detail and invite you to work with, with me for the next uh, 12 weeks. So just remember, uh, if you're serious about this growth and, and you are able to do it, uh, here's the link. Go to growthbysabir.com slash apply and schedule that uh, discovery call ASAP as quickly as you can. And uh, if you have booked it right now in chat, please uh, let me know that that you have uh, booked so that I, I can see that you, you are, you're doing that. So, and I really, um, I hope that uh, you took a lot from this workshop. Guest 182 just booked in, and uh, I see so several of you are are putting in. There you go. So, well, what I would like to do is now I would like to open the floor to uh, the Q and A, uh, so that you can ask me any questions you like. Uh, I'll I'll read it, and my I have my team in the control room also helping me with some of these questions. So please. Well, post a question so that uh, I can I can answer answer your questions. So John Giordano said, "You work with B two B." So the um, the Rapid Two X Mastermind is focused on B two C e commerce. That mastermind is specifically for B two C e commerce, but we have um, worked with B two B e commerce companies and actually worked with brands that didn't even have a B two B e commerce and help them launch the proper strategy with uh, B2B uh, clients. But they were not, they're not part of the Rapid 2X Mastermind. I'm being fully transparent with you. Um, there is a, um, uh, you, if you book a discovery call uh, with, uh, with our team members, uh, you can say that you are B2B e-commerce and tell us where you are in your, in your journey. Uh, we have a different program for that. Uh, you, you might qualify for the Hyper 10X program, which is a one-on-one one -on -one private coaching. It's not, it's not a, a rapid 2X is focused on B2C e-commerce. Thank you, Michael. You booked. I'm anxious to prepare and look at steps. <laughs> well, when, when you are hit with all these eight dimensions, you, you, your mind starts racing and that's a very good thing, by the way. So, uh, let's see, uh, does this work for furniture? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, it depends. I mean, we have actually had a furniture client, uh, it was a local furniture client in Florida that um, worked with us to actually create a higher price point furniture to focus on architects and Airbnb and stuff like that. So that was a that was very interesting, and and we can definitely look at that. If furniture poses its own set of challenges because of size and weight and all of those kinds of things. But yes, the answer is yes, yes to that. Uh, so uh, you mentioned one of the mistakes is brand not focusing on organic growth. Can you give some examples of organic growth strategies? So a lot of, it's funny that in a lot of e-commerce sites, one of the things that I see uh, that they don't do is th they have an opportunity for, for the, let's say best case scenario, your site is converting at 3%. 97% of your traffic that came to your site did not buy from you, but they think, think of optimizing just the sales funnel, right? So they don't think about, but th these people interacted with me, right? Let's say even if you have a bounce rate of 65%, let's put that out, out of the way, you still have 35% of people engaging with your brand by looking at things, by clicking on things, not necessarily at the cart or anything with the sales funnel. But they don't do anything with, with collecting email or collecting SMS or browser notification. There are so many things you could do with that. To me, organic is also focusing on search engine optimization. 
looking at your social channels and doing organic content to build your content. There's so many things organically and email marketing. When you are uh, remarketing to your email database, how do you do it correctly so that you're organically growing and not keep on investing in Facebook ads and stuff like that? Uh, I, I also look at when you're working correctly with influencers and affiliates, I see those channels also, even though you pay your way into those channels too, I see them as organic channels because they keep on paying. That YouTube video that the influencer does doesn't go away. It sits there and people could be buying from it three to five years from now, right? That's organic, even though you may have paid for that placement uh, you know, three years ago. So there are so many organic strategies, growth strategies that uh, you could really focus on to optimize first before you even do paid channels. Good question, Zai. So, uh, so Michael shared his site. Uh, Michael did book in, so that's perfect. Uh, 2X growth in 12 weeks would be amazing. Yes. <laughs> and, and, the, and the way I measure uh, my client's success, even though I love numbers, is their happiness. What I do is every, every Monday when I hop on a call and I see smiling faces, because the stress level starts going away after two weeks, because my, I, I won't joke about this. Uh, the 12 weeks is brutal uh, because you're working on, on muscles that you have not worked on, right? And you have not worked on at this pace. So this 12 weeks is going to be not fun, right? But you do work on, you do work on these muscles to make them better. Do you show us how to optimize our Facebook ads? So the answer to that uh, guest 182 is that the answer is uh, is looking at all of your Facebook ad strategy altogether, right? Depending on where you are in your in your uh, journey, there are Facebook ads that will be optimized during the 12 week program, right? But then if you need that help ongoing with with the real help from a, a person that has done it on and on, that's what they do every day for their clients. I have a network of experts that I have vetted, personally vetted, and they, I know that they're really qualified at taking on that business. I would make a referral so that you can connect with them, uh, so that you can you can work with them to continuously uh, implement that optimization ongoing because they have proven themselves. Let's keep going with Q and A. I'll I'll be here uh, as long as you guys keep on asking me questions. Keep going. No questions is barred. Go ahead. Don't be shy. So while we're at, waiting for uh, other questions, based on the presentation that I have done, what sort of what sort of um, you have experience in Amazon? Yes, more than twenty five years of it. <laughs> I helped launch two of the categories for Amazon. Health and wellness, when Amazon wanted to get out of the not just selling books and launch, uh, I, I actually took Vitamin Shop in that example that I shared with you with, with the case study uh, and, and launched and helped Amazon launch health and wellness with Vitamin Shop. So I'm very intimate with Amazon and actually uh, not only do I do I help uh, advise uh, client brands, I also have my own brands and I'm, a, I'm an active Amazon seller also. So I have highly relevant experience, hands-on, with battle scars on my back. Good question. So, uh, so given all everything you learned from the eight dimensions, where do you believe is your major pain points? What dimensions are your major pain points? Okay, Laura asked a very good question. You mentioned the importance of putting customers first in the eight dimensions. How do you do that? Data surveys, right? So the answer is it's more than that. It's not just uh, it's not just data and surveys, right? You have to look at testimonials. You have to look at reviews, ratings, external platforms that that uh, when people go and Talk about your business on all of these other platforms that you are not, you have no control over, right? Uh, doing doing social listening, um, and when you are doing that for your brand, at the same time you have to do that uh, and listen to 
uh, what people are saying about your competition. And because they're so vocal, they're vocal about your brand, they're also vocal about your competitors' brands. And there is a gold mine of data there where you can also see what things you need to improve on or at least improve your content where you are addressing those issues that your competition is not addressing if your product addresses those things, right? So when we are looking at those dimensions and, and putting the customer first, that's what we are doing. Everything we're doing from delivery experience to the content we're sharing with them, to the testimonials, other types of content, everything we can do to make that customer journey uh, more pleasurable for, for our customers and more easy for them, the, the more they reward us with, with the right things, right? With, with, with more loyalty, more transactions, more frequency, more reviews, more content, more, more feedback, and so on. Uh, Chris says, we currently use two different agencies, one for SEO, another for Google ads and social ads. After this workshop, will outsourcing these agencies still be needed, right? Well, the thing is, when we talked about dimension number eight and we talked about the team, right, we have to go through that evaluation process. And when, when we touch on the team, we will look at and see uh, what we need to do. If you're using one for SEO, uh, do they have the right experience in, and, and are you seeing results from the SEO, right? And the other one that's a kind of a red flag for me, the agencies that say that they do Google ads and social ads and social ads, I don't know if you mean meta ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, you know, YouTube ads, all those are social ads. And when you, when you put all of that in one basket, the challenge is that no agency excels at all of them, right? To me, that's a red flag, right? But, you know, I, I could be surprised, but I, I'm rarely surprised, right? So Michael says, customer segmentation, direct landing page communication, et cetera. My products have quite universal applications, so not narrowing down well yet, right? However, you could do use, case, use cases. Even if your product is uh, great at um, addressing a universal problem, right? However, your use cases, how does a, a person in a home environment use the product? How do they use it in the office? How do they use it in a school? How do they use it in a commercial building, right? Every one of those use cases, you're addressing a customer segment that you're showing them how they could be using it. And yes, it could be used in their segment, right? So there, there are use cases that you can actually show even though your product, it could be a broomstick, right? It has a universal application, but how are you using it? Where can it be used properly, right? It, it's it's that part of it that you really need to unlock and show with content. And, and, and believe me, there are uh, products, the same product sold by a thousand different sellers on Amazon one of them does really well and all the others don't do well right like a cat fountain so how do you how do you tell a story around that the brand that's winning is actually showing you that it works for kittens it works for big cats and it works for medium sized cats it works for some, you know all sorts of different scenarios whether you have your cat in your office you have your cat in your living room you can have your cat in your bedroom it depends on the use cases, right? The more you do that, the more they they see that that's what is being that the product could be is versatile and it could be used on so many other platforms. I just watched a case study from Oren Brothers. What did you do in the first week to get fifty? <laughs> <laughs> um, the the thing is, you know, you know how I said uh, the. Um, you know, for the other client that the issue was a, a border that was missing on a pop-up that caused less use of, of a pop-up, right? Uh, with 50% growth, and Orem Brothers is not a unique solution here, that the unique case study that they experienced 50% growth in one week, right? The um, the thing is, when when I see, because I'm my eye is so trained on seeing issues for the past 25 years, and I do this now consistently across so many clients now that to me, it's a trained eye, right? So when I see it, well, like, oh, you need to fix this, right? When I do that, <laughs> it just, uh, you, you get 30 to 50% increase in conversion rate. You, you get, 
you get the same traffic that you have been sending or even you know the same traffic you're sending just making that that tweak it just you know it bounces that thing up right so there are things like that that when we are looking at this kind of a growth right uh, and in their case um you know we we looked at uh, a specific customer segment also besides a, a site optimization the combination of those two things gave us a 50% growth in in that first week right so keto says d6 i uh, so dimension six, I think th it is a pain point. I, it takes a long time to implement current market needs, need a better platform, software, SaaS. You know what, brother? You know, it's you, you, you're the wrong tech stack is a detriment to a lot of growth. It, it is, to be very frank with you, right? Biting that bullet and replatforming and paying that, I don't know, 10 to 25K for you to get on a better platform like a Shopify and, and uh, you're, you're recovering so much, uh, you know, so much revenue from it that, and, and also you're, you, you put yourself on, on a uh, growth map, you know, roadmap that if you were to even try to fix the problems on the, on the custom platform that you might have that you thought was a great platform, you know, because somebody told you Magento is free or you just have to pay for ISP hosting. Yeah. Look at total cost of ownership and loss of revenue. <laughs> it's not free. It's costing you, right? So uh, what tools would you use to validate a product to sell, right? There are so many tools uh, you can, depending on, you could do your research, you know, to, um, and we will share a lot of different tools that I've vetted and have used. And I'm going to recommend to you during those, uh, when we are talking about product positioning, and when we are thinking about uh, uh, getting into other verticals, in this case, with the question though, it makes me think that you're thinking of drop shipping or private labeling a product, right? So that is, uh, you know, if you are building a brand, then it makes sense for us to do that research, for us to think about what we want to sell and where there's an opportunity for us to sell. We will go through that strategy of how to make a product, even if it's a commodity product, how can you make it such so that it's such a uh, different product that you could charge three times as much and people are willing to pay you for it, right? Because you are you have built a product that addresses the market that the existing products that sell on there, they don't, right? Otherwise, wh why bother? Like go and get, get a product on Alibaba or AliExpress and just retail it, right? But that's not the answer. You, you want to build through this Rapid2x mastermind uh, you 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 have a pro proven product market fit, and now you want to expand sales on it, and or you want to expand your product portfolio, and you're thinking about the right strategies on how to expand that product portfolio. So, perfect. Uh, so, how big of margin are, are around pop up and like border two? <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's a good question, Michael. Right. Uh, no, uh, they were missing a border. When I looked at it, it, it the uh, the, the pop-up was just not visible that it was a pop-up. It made it look like it was a mistake on the page. By putting a border, it, it just popped up. You know, visually it popped up. So putting that up, <laughs> the conversion rate just went through the roof, you know. Uh, Laura says, uh, Amazon has become uh, very competitive. Reviews are harder to get and ads are very expensive. Have you seen this and can you can your method help us? So Laura, very good question. Um, the fact is, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Amazon has become competitive. And there are, um, you know, there are many, many sellers and more sellers entering into the seller market on Amazon because it's very easy. It's very easy to go and get a product and retail it and start selling it and stuff like that, right? Because Amazon has made the selling experience even very easy for people, right? And because you have that marketplace that's, uh, you know, that's willing to pay for the ads. And believe me, Amazon ads are cheaper than Google ads or Facebook ads. Facebook ads are the most expensive, right? So even given, given the market uh, conditions right now, Amazon ads are actually really good. And if you saw what I shared with you with Coloflex, Coloflex is experiencing a 10x ROAS on Amazon ads. So it's not about expensive. It's about return on your advertising spend. If you spend a dollar and you're getting $10 in revenue on Amazon ads, that's a bargain. That's not expensive. 
So let's see, is WooCommerce a decent platform? Uh, WooCommerce has its challenges, you know, as far as uh, the, every time you need to make um, an update, that means that you need to have a WooCommerce or a WordPress developer to help you. So when you have that hold, hold over your business, that means that you're at the mercy of making changes that you could have just went into the app store on, on a platform like Shopify and you could have added a, a Shopify app to do that thing within the next hour and launch that feature, right? So the expense of launching is not just expense on, on WooCommerce, it's the total cost of ownership, right? So as you expand, more bandwidth means more, more uh, you know, you need to get more bandwidth and you have to pay for that bandwidth. And then scaling is becomes an issue, right? Where if you go from Shopify, I, anytime on Shopify, I have businesses that are on the lower tiered plan, not not the big plan, not the Shopify Plus. They're doing a million to ten million dollars on the lower plan, right? Uh, but if they want the features that Shopify Plus gives you, then they upgrade it. And sometimes it's a financial decision for us to upgrade to Shopify Plus because the they use Shopify payments and the transaction fee is cheaper on the Shopify Plus. And net net, the fees that you pay is cheaper on the Shopify Plus. So sometimes I recommend to the clients to just upgrade just because the, the charges are going to be cheaper. Your expenses uh, get lowered when you go to Shopify Plus, not that they need any specific features of the Shopify Plus platform, right? So you have to always think about the, the bigger picture and, and, and what it means uh, from a total cost of ownership. Uh, and when I say that, I don't mean just the, the charges you're getting from your ISP, but also uh, your developer, your time to market, all of those things count in cost, cost as uh, total cost of ownership, right? I know that you don't want to give away pricing, but can you give me a general range? So I, I did make this, I, I like I told you, the Hyper 10X program is a 100K program. That's not for this, this workshop was not for that. It's This is meant to be for the businesses that are in the 500K to $5 million revenue range. And it's quite affordable. I can tell you that, uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised getting in there. Uh, it's it's a fraction of that uh, 100K. It's a fraction. So uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. I don't want to give away pricing. So <laughs> you can uh, you can uh, definitely uh, book that discovery call if you are in that range. Uh, and and every all the other criteria that I just mentioned to you, uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. So... Guest 182, you might be on the right track. So when you are working in the mastermind, when we are meeting, uh, the, the, there are the the invite is for the founders only, right? So when you're in there, because you are the decision maker, you and you the buck stops with you, right? So when I'm giving you directions on a weekly basis, those tasks that are being assigned to you, uh, you you take it and you work with your team. If you don't have a team member that can execute the thing I'm telling you to execute, you can reach out to me when we are doing our office hours or you know, and say that, hey, could you rec recommend somebody who can do X, Y, Z for me? Because I had a guy who was not doing a great job. I fired him, her, whatever. I, I, can, I can refer you to the right people so that, yes, you're working, your team is working on your tasks. But while in that first two weeks, when you vet them to see, are they capable of, uh, executing those, those things at the speed that we need them to execute it. If the answer is no, then I, you can reach out to me during the office hours, uh, during the mastermind, uh, when, when you're in the mastermind, and I will give you uh, recommendations and referrals to work with the right people so that you can get them executed on time. So that's an excellent question, Alex. So roughly how long are the Monday calls? So there are two meetings a week that you have to come to. Everyone is required to come for 12 weeks. So on Mondays, we do a 90-minute mastermind session where I'm presenting to you exactly what needs to get done, right? So that you're getting educated, uh, you're, you're, you, know, you're, you know your tasks and what needs to get done. And on Wednesdays, we have a 90-minute office hours. And I, it's highly recommended the participants to also join the office hours and bring whatever they tried from the Monday session through Tuesday, through to until we meet for the office hours, come come to the table with problems with implementation, 
so that you can change your course and implement it the rest of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend so that by the time we get to Monday, because we have moved on to the next dimension and, and your business should have implemented and we should have started seeing some data uh, from and some performance numbers and stuff like that. So, so Bill says, outstanding value you have given today. Many thanks. I need to build my new business and I'll be back when I get to 500K. Well, Bill, good luck with that. Definitely. Uh, when you get that, get there, definitely. Um, I hope that you have joined the, the, the community so that at least as you're going through your growth, growth uh and starting your plan that you are getting that uh so uh alex says do you have an estimated start date so our next mastermind actually starts in on april 1st that april 1st happens to be a monday so that's the first session of rapid 2x mastermind so these uh, these spots are going really fast so if you're serious about uh, uh making this change in your business i would highly recommend get to get your spot in the discovery call as soon as possible because I have a very limited number of people. I, like I said, I'm not a big agency, so I don't have like thousands of people answering uh, these discovery calls. So go through that process as quickly as you can this week and, and book your spot before we run out. Uh, otherwise, then I don't know when, when the next one is going to be. Now, Bill says, yes, I have. Um, uh, Mark, if you were to start a new e-com business, what niche would you choose? Listen, I, I worked in every niche, you know, so I can turn around a lot of niches. So uh, th the thing is, it's not about the niche. It's about what you do it, with that brand and with that product. You can go, I can go into a highly saturated market and still come out a winner, right? It, it, it's doing, it's about doing the right things with that brand and with that product is what makes you win, right? Uh, and uh, especially in the U.S., uh, Amazon sellers market, there are so many international players, uh, Chinese sellers and and other sellers from other other countries that are saturated the market at, at a lowest part price points and stuff like that. But it depends on are you competing against them or are you building a brand and and a product that you can ask for 10x more price and consumers are willing to pay yours because you are addressing a different market and you're not. You're, you're not selling a commodity product. So thank you for all, all of the q and I really enjoyed uh, having you guys uh, at here and, and the, in the webinar. We had a very, we started at, uh, at 3 p.m. It's 5.30. Uh, thank you for your giving us your time. Uh, thank you, Zai. Thank you, Mark, Bill, Alex, uh, Chris, Laura, Guest182, right? uh chris michael everybody that joined us if i've not named you there are so many of you here here thank you for participating part thank you for listening in um definitely uh go into that community go go in and if if you meet the criteria apply to the growth by severe.com slash apply uh reserve your spot uh so that i can see you on the other side so that we can take your business and to exit in 12 weeks and uh, it was great having you guys here and have a fabulous time and good luck with your ventures. Bye-bye.